keenvention.info. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, July 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.82 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,106 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $280. Antiwar.com reports, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, at least 26 people were killed in a round of airstrikes against the Islamic State-held town of Manbej yesterday, and dozens of others were wounded. Many of the toll were civilians, including children. Though there is no official confirmation of who carried out the airstrikes, the observatory said that it was most likely the Syrian military. The U.S. and Allied warplanes have also attacked the town in recent days, however. Manbej is in the Aleppo province, part of the Islamic State territory near the Turkish border, which is not contiguous to the main territory. The Islamic State sought to link the two segments with offensives against the Kurdish city of Kobani, but has so far been unsuccessful. The U.S. has been keen to attack the region to help fund the Kurds with their offensives against the Islamic State, while the Syrian military is trying to slow the Islamic State expansion toward the Aleppo provincial capital, an important city half controlled by them and half controlled by other rebel forces. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports officials in drought-stricken California have levied a $1.5 million fine against a group of farmers and residents with senior water rights for allegedly diverting water illegally, according to the State Water Board. The State Water Resources Control Board announced Monday the Byron Bethany Irrigation District, located in Tracy, California, just outside of San Francisco, must pay the fine or request a hearing with the Water Board within 20 days. The agency says the district continued to use water from an intake channel at the bank's pump plant for nearly two weeks after new water restrictions were put in place. Those new restrictions, ordered June 12th, curtailed water used by farmers with water rights dating back to 1903. Byron Bethany, along with a number of other irrigation districts, sued the Water Board challenging its authority to curtail their water rights, which date back to before 1914, the date the state originated its water rights system, according to the Sacramento Bee. The board said Byron Bethany diverted more than 2,000 acre-feet of water during the two weeks it was allegedly out of compliance. The last time the state ordered restrictions for pre-1914 right holders was during a drought in the 1970s. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Cuban flag was raised over Havana's embassy in Washington on Monday for the first time in 54 years as the United States and Cuba formally restored relations, opening a new chapter of engagement between the former Cold War foes. Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez presided over the re-inauguration of the embassy, a milestone in the diplomatic thaw that began with an announcement by President Barack Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro on December 17th. Underscoring differences that remain between the United States and the communist-ruled Cuba, Rodriguez seized the opportunity to urge Obama to use executive powers to do more to dismantle the economic embargo, the main stumbling block to full normalization of ties. For its part, the Obama administration pressed Havana for improvement on human rights. But even with continuing friction, the reopening of embassies in each other's capitals provided the most concrete symbols yet of what has been achieved after more than two years of negotiations between two governments 
governments that had long shunned each other. Rodriguez said at the reopening ceremony, the historic events we are living today will only make sense with the removal of the economic, commercial, and financial blockade, which causes so much deprivation and damage to our people. The return of occupied territory in Guantanamo and respect for the sovereignty of Cuba. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A new report from the National Center for Education shows that an alarming 10% of U.S. high school students graduate without basic object permanence skills. According to the study, a growing number of American seniors are lagging behind their international counterparts when it comes to the crucial knowledge that things don't just disappear if you're not looking at them. Because it exists even if your eyes can't see it. Am I making sense? No. U.S. high schoolers have dropped to 17th in science, 25th in math, and a troubling 180th place in the basic cognitive awareness most humans develop as toddlers. Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan is asking Congress to fund increased after school disguise and reveal programs. It's time to get the kids excited to learn the most obvious mental concepts that make us capable of functioning. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do better. It's just I don't know how I'm supposed to learn anything if I don't even have a teacher. I'm still here, Vanessa. <sighs> Some educators worry that too much focus placed on object permanence might take away from other important skills, such as not touching hot things that could burn you. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here. You can bring up anything that happens to be on your mind. Of course, we always bring interesting stuff to the table to uh, start the discussion out tonight. The we tonight includes me, Ian. And Conan. So I've got uh, video footage that I didn't quite have ready for the show last night. Coming up also, uh, this video footage of a state rep behaving very badly. State representative trying to crush freedom of the press and it was all caught on video much to the chagrin of some people who are actually in the liberty movement so we can talk about that plus conan you brought in a story about a restaurateur yelling at a toddler correct and is that the right way to handle uh these this outrageous behaviors from people or should they should you buckle should you give in because i mean who knows who this person is how do you handle a bratty customer right exactly so it's not just restaurants it's it's stores anybody who deals with the public knows you know has experienced something like this and i want to talk about that and of course whatever happens to be on your mind uh we we're doing a skype only show last night so the regular phone lines are back here tonight if you want to join us at 855 450 free 855-450-3733. But I want to play some of this video here, Conan, and get your opinion on it because a lot of people are upset. They're, uh, well, I guess not a lot, enough people. Some people are bothered by this. I post, I like to post these videos that uh, that, uh, are made here in Keene, New Hampshire on Free State Project uh, forums and places where people in the liberty movement are, are going to see them. Um, and, you know, I get feedback from people, and a lot of them didn't like this one. So I'm going to play this back. It's from J.P. Freeman. He was actually – he called the show last night. He's a local cop block activist. J.P.'s not actually a uh, Free State Project participant. Conan, you and I are. We moved to New Hampshire uh, as part of the Free State Project, which is an idea of gathering liberty-oriented people all in the same physical location – so we can be more effective and achieve liberty in our mm-hmm. lifetime. Uh, I think JP has moved more in a liberty-oriented direction in the time that I've known known him. I don't know if he would self-describe as a libertarian. He is a cop blocker. He is somebody who uh, he goes to hold the police accountable. He When he sees the police pulling somebody over, he's probably got a video camera with him. He's going to pull it out. He's going to record that scene. And not every cop block participant handles things in the exact same way. So in cert- like in certain circumstances, if I come up on a scene, uh, somebody getting pulled over, I will usually ask before I start to record because I want to be respectful of the individual. And if somebody's upset that I'm recording them, like, you know, they feel bad that they got pulled over by the police or whatever, and they want me to go away or not record, then I- I'll step back and I won't record. Do you let them know off the bat that you're free press? Uh, what I'll do is I'll just... I don't say anything like that necessarily, but like when the cop will walk away from their window, let's say the cop's taking their license and the cop goes back to the car to to run the license. uh, That's when I'll say something like, hey, are you okay with me recording this? Right. And of of course, most people 
in the area recognize you already anyways. So, I mean, they're already... I don't know who's from the area and who's not. A lot of people in Keene, New Hampshire, are actually visiting from Vermont or Massachusetts. They're here shopping. Uh, This is sort of like the economic hub of this region, basically. So, you encounter... If you're on the streets and you actually... If you try to do petitioning, you'll see this. Um, I think you've done some petitioning, Mm -hmm. if I'm recalling correctly. But, you know, if you're just out on the streets in Keene, you're going to be hitting Connecticut, Vermont, Massachusetts more often than you'll even find somebody who's a local. Especially in the downtown area where yeah. there are, you got the tourists now of course now this state rep is gladys johnson correct she's uh she's- a d minus rated state rep as of 2014 now there's the new hampshire liberty alliance which is a freedom oriented group that actually ranks each state representative there's 400 state representatives in new hampshire get paid a hundred dollars a year these are not professional state reps mm-hmm. uh, usually they're just average folks who want to try to do what they think is best you make like a hundred dollars a year or whatever it is it's a hundred bucks a year and a small gas stipend right and that's it yeah this is our ward's representative by the way that's ward, correct ward four yep so uh she, and she by the way apparently ran un uh nobody opposed her in yeah her that was my election. mistake last year i completely ran uh uh open floater what uh and you, i could have gone against her it turns out some people don't like her uh, well, I mean, that's going to be true with every state rep. I mean, because some people are, aren't going to like the decisions you make. Some people aren't going to like the liberty-oriented reps' decisions that they make because they want to see bigger government. So anyway, this is a pretty big government lady, and uh, and she certainly shows her true colors here in this video. I'm going to just kick it off here because it's it's not really a cop block because he's not actually dealing with the cops. The, the, let me define the difference between a she's cop an, watch. She's an authority figure. Right. So uh, somebody had asked the question of, well— you know, what is cop blocking? Okay, cop blocking is different from cop watching. Cop watching what actually came before cop block. Cop watch was, and I used to do cop watch uh, back in the day, which in essentially meant that you would sort of stand there quietly at a distance and observe the situation, you with a camera or without, just observing the situation. The difference between a cop watch and a cop block is the cop blocker is more likely to encounter to sort of insert themselves in the encounter, not physically, not to like you know get in between the cop and the person they're dealing with, but to say things like you know insert words into the encounter, like hey, why don't you leave that that girl alone? Hey, leave that old lady alone. She didn't do anything. She yeah. didn't hurt well, yeah, anybody. Does, does she have to show you her ID? She's just walking down the street or whatever. Right. Or yeah, you could you could also as a cop blocker uh, insert suggestions for the the victim of the police. You could say like hey, you don't have to answer his questions. You're just sort of giving suggestions from the from the right, side. A lot of people really don't know their rights. They I all they see no is idea. a guy with a badge, and it's like he wants to see something. So all right, I guess I have to because he's he's the authority, right? Right. And there's different levels of of uh, blocking you can do. Right. You can some the the people who are new to cop block usually kind of stand as far away as they can. The people who are more experienced are likely to get very very close. Uh, here in Keene, we can get comfortably close to the police, like within six feet, and usually they won't yell at you or anything like that. Your mileage may vary in t- different yeah, if, areas yeah, of the if, country. If anything, you most often going to get yelled at by the victim. Yes, because they that's don't, true. Because they don't want their face on get on YouTube or whatever. The cops are like, yeah, whatever. The cops in this area. They're very anyways. professional. The police are, and you're right. It's the victims who are the ones who are. They feel guilty. They feel bad about being pulled over. They are embarrassed, and they don't want to be on video. And I'll usually respect their request. The only reason I wouldn't respect their request is if they were being arrested by the police. Mm-hmm. If the police right. were, were actually putting their hands on them and doing something like that, I would feel that it was my obligation to record that situation regardless of what the victim felt. But generally, I will accede to whatever the victim's uh, preferences are. In this video, the victim of the police is a state representative. Mm. And I feel like uh, JP handled this very, very well, but I'm interested to hear how you feel about it, Conan. So let's uh, kick it off the beginning of this video. It's currently posted right now at freekeen.com. This is uh, JP Freeman from Keen Cobbler. This is actually a state rep. 225 is the state rep. Yeah, look at her plate. Just explain what's going on there. Each state representative in New Hampshire is given a special house license plate, and it gives their number. There's like a certain number that is spe- uh, special to that individual. So if you're driving down the road and you see the number, uh, you could look it up and you could figure out who's driving that car, which state rep uh, his car is that. But I think there's an important thing that JP does here, and that is that he he actually doesn't. Uh, jump to the conclusion that this is the state rep. He he asks her later mm-hmm. if this is the state rep, and he actually gets uh, got some heat on one of the Free State Project forums for even asking that question. What? Yeah, so let me go on here. So, 
what's happening in the video right now, and it's pretty loud, so uh, she's she starts to wave at him. She's in her car, and there's a police officer uh, at the window talking with her. She and a, does she have a handicap sticker, by the way? She does have a handicap sticker, and she walks. So you don't see her walking in this video, but there's a longer, raw version of the video where you can actually see her walking around. So she's obviously not uh, like wheelchair kind of handicapped. Right. Uh, but anyway, she's waving at him through the windshield of her car, and you can see that in the video, telling, sort of giving him hand motions that, go away, go away, buddy. You know, I don't want you here. And then she finally climbs out of her car. Would you take my picture? Please stop. I'm taking a picture of the uh, police officer. I'm you... asking you not to. You don't need to take a picture of her. I, I most certainly do have a right to take she's a picture of her. Job. Buzz off. I'll stay right here, ma'am. Thank you. Now, I feel like in that first interaction, he was, res I mean, he was respectful, at least, in that he didn't call her any kind of names. He didn't say, hey, you B, you ought to shut up or whatever. I'll do what I want. He did assert his right. Mm -hmm. Like, this is my right. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to record this police officer. Uh, let me go on with this video. There's only about another minute and a half here. It's fairly short. We'll get to more of that. We'll take your calls and thoughts. And I'll read some of the critiques of this. And we'll see what you think about it, Conan. This is your first time watching it here uh, tonight. You can see it for yourself over at freekeen.com. We'll post a link on our Facebook and Twitter. You can share your thoughts on how JP does in this video. I think he does a pretty good job. Uh, but we'll hear the rest here in a moment. 855-450 freeze our toll-free number. We've got Skype as well. It's Skype username LRN.FM. We're coming up. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a Hidden Holster from HiddenHolster.com. It's the original Hidden Holster. The Hidden Holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a Hidden Holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. The original Hidden Holster. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com.
LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid, we do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We are back now with more Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here talking about a video that has proved controversial even though I'm a little bit surprised that it has uh, over on the uh, the Free State Project group on Facebook. Uh, there's a lot of pushback against this, from mostly from Dennis Goddard, who has always been a critique or a critic, rather, of uh, some of the activism that has gone on here in the Keene area. We've moved here, uh, Conan, you, myself, and hundreds of people have moved to New Hampshire. Over actually 1,500 have made the move so far as part of the Free State Project which is an idea of let's concentrate libertarian types in one area and get active so we can achieve freedom or at least more freedom in our lifetime. And the thing is, when you do that and you do activism, not everybody agrees with how you've gone about it. So I'll right. place if, if more you're, If you're not the type who just stands on the road and holds a sign, you're going to get flack. I mean, that, that's the You'll kind of— you get flack if you do that. Well, you yeah, usually— the, People will say, "Why don't you hold a flag?" I mean, that's that's the kind of thing that you can just drive by, and then once you turn around a corner, it's out of sight, out of mind. You don't hear yep. about it anymore. The kind of stuff that's going on here in the area, especially here in the Keene area, is it sticks around. You know, when you're reading about us in the paper, us as in the uh, the activists here in the area, when you're reading about us in the paper, it, it, well, at least once a month, you know, at so, least yes. front page in a lot of cases, right? Too. Uh, you know, you you stick in the minds of the of the locals who don't want change, who just want the same old, even though uh, it's you know destroying this country very slowly, but surely it's destroying the country, that they, they still, you know, it's better than it's better than anarchy. It's better than chaos. You know, we need something to, to keep the, the rabble from uh, uh, destroying our you know our livelihoods. And, and in reality, the, the very thing that they believe in is, is very is slowly suffocating them. And that's the worst part about it. We, you know, two young guys, you know, we're, we stand to inherit this, this world. Mm. And we're having to fight tooth and nail with these, with these oldens, these olders, you know, who, who, who like to vote, by the way. This lady in the video is probably in her 70s, would be my guess, if not late 60s. She's mm -hmm. fairly, uh, she's definitely of retiree age. Uh, we'll continue with the audio from the track here in a moment. But let's go to Mike in Oregon, listening to LRN.FM. Hello, Mike. Hey, guys. Welcome. Hey, Ian, once again, uh, awesome job. Uh, the other week uh, I saw the video of those uh, when you guys were up on Rogers Campground and those two government thugs went up and uh, tried to interfere. And I just got to say, who do these guys think they are? Well, oh, they think they the own you. Property? You're talking about the tax, oh, yeah. the tax goons who showed up at the yeah. Porcupine Freedom Festival and proceeded to attempt to threaten all of the people who are selling food there. They knew there were people selling there without a government license, a uh, like a tax certificate to prove they were collecting sales taxes. Because even though New Hampshire doesn't have a sales tax on stuff, you know, they go to Walmart, there's no tax. But if it's prepared food, there is a prepared, you know, meals tax. And so they wanted right. to threaten everybody, and I uh, and several other people surrounded them and basically told them, get out of here. We don't want you here. Made a video of it. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Go ahead, Yeah, Mike. those those were the king's I, men. They yeah. were they were coming for their cut. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, yeah, Mike. absolutely. So, anyways, <clears throat> what I called in about today was essentially something I called in late last year about, and, and um, I talked to Mark about it, and you weren't on the show that night, so I kind of want to tell you about this. 
when I was living back in New Hampshire, this was back in 2003, I believe, I had an incident with a state police on the phone, and essentially they threatened me. Uh, That's what they do best. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and this, by the way, I wasn't hurting anybody. Buddy. This was strictly me having fun. Uh, I used to have neon lighting under my car, under my Jeep Cherokee, mm-hmm. and I was getting a little nervous because your, your vehicle in New Hampshire will not pass state inspection, supposedly, with this light kit attached to your car. Really? Oh, so I, yeah. Well, so is, is it because it because you look like a, an authority figure, a police officer, or a, with or neon a, under your car? I don't know. I mean, is it does it signal people? I don't know. What is what was do you do? Do you yeah, know the reasoning the excuse, behind this? Right? Is it is it distracting or something like that? Okay, so there's there's a lot of things that kind of go along with this argument. Is they're saying it's not DOT approved lighting. Uh-huh. Um, my lights were purple. My they weren't blue or red. Um, they were purple. Okay. And when I had them attached to my my Jeep Cherokee. Uh, I was getting a little nervous, so what I did, and of course, this was back when I didn't know anything, um, I called the New Hampshire State Police on this, and I asked the guy, I says, are you a state trooper? And he says, yes, I am. I says, well, I says, I have a question concerning neon lighting under, that's illegal, and right off the bat, he just interrupted hmm. me, it's illegal. So I asked him, I says, well, what is the harm in this? I'm not really understanding. He said, if we pull you over in the middle of the day, and do an on-the-side road inspection of your vehicle in the middle of the day, and we see that your light, that light kit is attached to your vehicle, whether it's turned on or not, we're going to scrape your sticker inspector, and inspection sticker off, take your plates off, and rip the lights off the vehicle and leave you on the side of the road. It's insane. Absolutely incredible. So I decided, I mean, this is, you know, 13, 14 years ago, Last week, I decided to do a little follow-up with this. It was my day off from work, so I'm going to have a little fun. So I'm going to call the New Hampshire State Police again, even though I'm out in Oregon. You're in Oregon, okay. And, right. uh, yeah, I'm going to ask them what the, the legality of, of neon lights under vehicles are in New Hampshire. And there is no statute. There is I wrote to all the lighting codes, and there is no statute. So I called three New Hampshire State Police barracks, and I finally got in touch with the inspector, uh, one of the inspectors, he's like the head supervisor, and he says to me that you cannot have those under your vehicle in the state of New Hampshire. But yet, if I'm on private property, that means it's okay. However, a police officer has the authority to come up to you and give you a hard time. I says, well, he's got the gun. He goes, you, you bet he does. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, these, are these people for real? These people have an agenda to essentially instill this mind-crippling fear into you. Mm. I mean, fear is, I think, one of the, the worst things that your mind can go through. Absolutely. So it sounds like what they're doing the is time. they, uh, you know, they've, they've, you said it's not in the statutes. So probably the statute right. authorizes the Department of Safety, or whatever they call themselves, uh, to come up with a list of things that's not allowed. So it's probably not even something that the state reps have even looked at or or approved, it's like, oh, well, we'll just, we'll just let the director of the Department of Motor Vehicles decide. And then they just come up with some arbitrary list. And then on the bottom of the statute that said uh, equipment of, uh, for motor vehicles, it said that all lighting or all equipment must be approved by the director. That is as close to any aftermarket lighting or aftermarket things on your vehicle that this actually even mentioned. But it, does, it has, says nothing about undercarriage lighting, but yet they could just pull something out of their butt make up it on the spot and say it's illegal and give you a ticket. I'd like to know what the reason, rationale is for this as well. And, Mike, thanks for sharing your story with us tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Uh, yeah, there's got to be some reason. It, it messes with their equipment. It makes them they, – they stand out, makes them look like they're a cop with purple lights or something. What kind of I don't... cop would have un- neon underlighting? I, I mean, sorry, unless it was a car that – like, I mean, back in Florida, you lived in Florida for a little while. You probably saw this. They uh, would jack – drug dealers cars and then they'd put the dare logo on the side of it Mm -hmm. it would say something like we took this from a drug dealer and maybe they would have neon lighting under it or something like that but i've never seen a police cruiser with neon we have here in Keene. we have these sign ordinances they don't want signs lit up after eight o'clock or whatever so maybe it has something to do with that
some old guys like we don't want there's, these these yeah. these urbanites New driving, fangled. Dri- driving through our streets <laughs> at night with their purple lights and whatnot i think they're super cool there's more coming up here in moments it's free talk live share your thoughts We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or... Go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at Twitter.LRN.FM. That's Twitter.LRN.FM. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. You can join us here... The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Is it rude to stand up for your rights when some state representative yells at you and tells you to stop recording them? It, You're in the streets. It's just not the way, Ian. It's not It's not kosher. To you, stand up for yourself, you You mean? should go back home, uh, sit down for two hours and write a nice letter to the editor, send it in, <laughs> uh, get, some, get some feedback from the people who actually read it. 
And, you know, yeah. it's this is a long process. Just, I mean, you've really got to, you know, years and years even. Oh, right, wait till the next election. You can vote her out. Right. You know, these are all things that the critics might be saying uh, about JP's video. It's up right now. You can watch it over at freekeen.com. That's what we're playing back for you. And we'll continue that. Plus, on the way, uh, Conan is going to be sharing us a sto- sharing with us a story about a restaurant o- owner who yelled at a toddler and leads to a larger question of how do you handle a misbehaving customer? What's the right way to go about doing that? So you can comment on anything you want here. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number. Also, you need to protect yourself online. You have to take the responsibility for your online world because your internet service provider is not going to protect you. In fact, they're one of the people, uh, one of the groups probably violating your privacy. They're probably downloading or they're you know logging every single website that you visit. Every search term you enter, maybe mining that information, selling it to other corporations, turning it over to the government. You can stop that from happening right now by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Download ProXPN. There's an app there for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. You get started and you can get started for free right now. Get connected to ProXPN and they encrypt your data connection so your own internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing on their own internet connection. Plus, criminals trying to sniff out your Wi Fi packets will be foiled as well. No more prying and spying with ProXPN. Plus, when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. You can go and get started, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. By using code FTL50, you'll save 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy the annual account. Again, code FTL50 to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, and again, use code FTL50. So if you're just tuning in, we started out with a little bit of audio. We're probably about uh, 30 seconds into it here. Just to recap, cop blocker J.P. Freeman is on the streets, uh, Keene, New Hampshire, Main Street, right outside of Social Sunday. We uh, had a new location for our weekly Social Sunday meeting this week, and uh, Keene police decided to pull somebody over about 100 feet away from the place where we were meeting. And so J.P. went over there. I actually had already headed out to to go do the show at that time, so I wasn't there for this. But I got to say, had I been there... I feel like I don't think I could have handled it much better than JP. JP is a very experienced cop blocker. And in this case, he never really got the chance to cop block because he actually uh, was, you know, turned out that the person who was pulled over was a state representative. And the state representatives here in New Hampshire have a license plate on the front of their car that sort of identifies them. Now, JP actually didn't jump to the conclusion. He does ask her here in a moment if she is a public official mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, it could have been her sister or her, you know, some her friend or maid or something like that driving the car. You know, you don't want to jump to a conclusion. This may not have actually been the state representative, in which case that person would have been an innocent victim. And the state representative would have been an innocent victim had she not acted like a jerk and waved him away and tell him, you know, told him to just buzz off and leave her alone that she didn't want to be recorded. Well, sorry, lady. Guess what? You're in public and further you're a state representative. So when I'm doing cop blocking, if somebody says they don't want to be recorded, I'll usually respect it unless they're in the process of being arrested or something like that. And then I feel like I, I really should record that. But if it's a state employee or a state government bureaucrat or a politician, then that seems to me to be somebody who does need to be recorded. Correct. That person has an extra level of expectation of you are not a private person. You need to be held twice accountable. Exactly. So let me continue with this audio. It's a little noisy because I boosted the levels of it uh, to make sure you could... Right there on Main Street. Yeah, so there's a lot of cars going going by. by. I had to boost the levels because I wanted to make sure you could hear what Gladys Johnson says. She is the state rep here in this case, a very poorly rated state rep. By the New Hampshire poorly rated. This is actually uh, state official 2-25, and she's heckling me about uh, videotaping police. I hope you're not a public official, ma'am. Okay, so and you're impeding my you're impeding the press's right for First Amendment, then, right? Tea party press. See how she jumps Tea to the Tea party con- press. Yeah. She jumps to the conclusion. Well, I guess she sort of asks him, but she she thinks he's part of the Tea Party because anyone who would oppose 
Gladys Johnson, who's a you know died in the wool Democrat, correct, must be a member of the Tea Party. And of course, JP is not. He's you know I don't think he's ever been to a Tea Party in his life, or nor I nor do I think he's at all a Republican. No, I'm not a Tea Party. Don't accuse me of that. In case you couldn't make it out, she says, I don't like you doing that. You don't have any right. And then it's it's in, you know, inaudible after that. You don't have any right, presumably, to record me in public. No, ma'am, you're incorrect. He absolutely has a right to do that. And people are, are Espe- accusing. Especially public figures. Exactly. Uh, and especially in public mm-hmm. as well. Uh, but even on, you know, even if you're in a, uh, a city council meeting or at the state house, if a one of these state reps walks by you, you absolutely have a right to record them. And certainly you have a right to ask them questions in order to hold them accountable. Now, I don't know about where you live, dear listener, but in New Hampshire, there's Article 8 of the New Hampshire Constitution. This is the uh, Bill of Rights in the New Hampshire Constitution. There's Article 22, which is the freedom of the press. And then there's Article 8, which is the uh, the, the government should be open and accountable. That it's your right to be able to ask these people questions, whether you have a video camera in your hand or not. Otherwise, guess what? They're not. They're not your representatives. They're not your representatives anyways. But, I mean, if you didn't have that in the clause, you know, it would just be total, well, it is kind of total chaos. But So you don't have any right to record me, she says. Actually, the First Amendment says I can. I'm the one that made the mistake. Hey, it's accountability. And now since I found out you're a public official, I'm going to videotape you too. happening in the video she's handing her license to the uh, police officer yeah, a public official that just flipped me off that's great that's what he just said he just witnessed you okay okay but it's going to be did, uh, did he did she in fact flip him off no and the the witness admits later in the video which jp includes in his video the witness admits that she could have been pointing rather mm. than flipping mm. the bird. So JP's gotten some heat for this section of the video because he believed what the witness was saying. But then he also believed her when she corrected him, right? Like he, he's being, in a, he's being you know, doing a level of investigative journalism here, right? If, if a witness who, to a scene says, hey, that politician just flipped the bird at you, then it's not unreasonable to believe that the witness has seen what actually happened. Right. She rebuts it, and he just accepts her rebuttal and moves on. No big deal. Post it anyway, ma'am. I'm sorry. Well, you're really dumb. To do I'm really yeah. dumb, huh? Well, you're not going to get reelected. Well, <laughs> she probably will unless, get reelected. Unless I run against her this year, and I will be trying my damnedest to— Are you going to run as a Democrat? I uh well no I don't know I'll think about it we'll, okay. we'll look what's on the table you know yeah. as far as I'm concerned she ran unopposed last as far time. as I'm com- I'm I, as far as I'm concerned they're to both they're the same yeah well no there's, there's no difference it's I don't just a I don't feel strategy. bad I'm there are some here in the area who will berate you for going against you know how you ran previous years or how you voted previous years you know what I don't see any difference between the two parties so I mean I don't yeah. really care. You it's know, just it's, a it's political all, it's choice. It's all about numbers. It's all about me trying to get elected so that, right. guess what I can do? I can vote no on everything. <laughs> or yes, you know, depending on, uh, you Even know. Even if you didn't show up, you'd probably be a better state rep oh, than yeah. most of the state reps in Keene. In Keene, uh, there, the, this New Hampshire Liberty Alliance comes out with these report, this Liberty Report card, basically, and gives all the state reps A through F mm-hmm. or constitutional threat. Or there's actually a dereliction of duty rating, which is what Gladys here received in 2015. So she was a D minus in 2014. In 2015, she was derelict of duty, which meant that she did not attend 70% or more of the votes that the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance ranks as this is what we look at. Like right. they look at these different votes. She wasn't there for a bunch well, of you them. Well, you know what? I only got an A. You got you and Daryl got A pluses. I don't know what I answered what are you wrong. About? From I don't what? know on my on the last uh, Liberty Alliance vote last year. Oh, so, oh, so oh. something where they think, were endorsing candidates. Yes, it, it had something to do with gun rights or something. We're going to come back with more here. Is JP out of line in this video? Our toll free number is 855 450 free. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. 
Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through ExpressCoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. It's going to be the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Rflags.com just found out that 49-year-old Anthony Hervey, a black man in Mississippi, he was chased down in his car and killed, apparently for his support of the Confederate flag. This will not stand. Rflags.com now offering 10% of every sale to go to the Hervey family to help them in their time of need. You want to help this family? Go to Rflags.com. We'll donate 10% of every sale. Rflags.com. That's Rflags.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live, welcome back here. This is J.P. Freeman, the, one of the local cop block activists here in Keene, New Hampshire. Is he out of line in the way that he's handling this very rude politician who has not only told him to leave her alone, stop recording her, stop recording the police because she was pulled over on Main Street here in Keene, New Hampshire, and J.P. got video of it. Not only is she telling him to stop exercising his right to be the free press, but she's also then calls him dumb mm -hmm. later on in the video. I think she said what he was doing was dumb. Yeah, well, she, she said he would be dumb to post this online. Right. I'll play back the audio here in just a moment. You're welcome to share your thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. We also have Skype. Skype usernames LRN.FM. Coming up, a restaurateur yells at a toddler, and Conan wants to know, what's the right way to deal with upset customers, with angry, irrational, frustrated shouting customers how do you handle that what's the best way to do it i'm sure there's more than a few people listening in our audience who have some experience at customer service uh, i've got a little bit as well as you conan 
So uh, we'll, we'll get to that story here in a moment. We're going to continue and finish up this video. It's almost done. It's fairly short with JP encountering this local politician. She's a state representative. She's ranked D minus last year on the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance ratings. Not good. You're right. When I said most of them get Ds, I meant most of the uh, representatives here in Cheshire County get yeah. D's. I mean, it's not that bad across New Hampshire. And by the way, there are an awful lot of representatives in New Hampshire, which is very different than the rest of the world. 400. Uh, it's the third largest uh, English-speaking legislature. It's like one per like 3,000, something like that. It's a lot. So let's continue here with this audio from Main Street in Keene with uh, J.P. Freeman, if it will play. Okay. Okay, but it's going to be posted anyway, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm really dumb, huh? Well, you're not going to get reelected. Go to bed. Go to bed. I'm not the one that's cranky, ma'am. All right. That's the only thing JP says that in any way, shape, or form could be considered insulting towards this woman. And there, there are people online. Dennis Goddard is one of them. He's a frequent caller to Free Talk Live. I'm actually going to, he's going to be hosting one of the panels at Keenvention. Because I don't take it personally. You that know? was completely acceptable. I'm not I the, think so, I'm too. not the one who's cranky. I mean, right. come on now. I mean, that she, was... It's not even an she, insult. She's throwing a fit in the middle of the street. Right. I mean, come on. And that's after she calls him dumb, right? You don't... If, that's just inappropriate. If you're a state representative, you shouldn't be calling, you know, your supposed constituents dumb. I mean, it's just... That's a tacky thing to do. Now, again, I think that's the only thing you could, if you want to pick this thing apart, that's the only thing you could really find that in any way, shape, or form could be considered well, an insult. he did say she's not going to get elected again because of her behavior. Well, I maybe, hope he's right maybe, about that. Maybe that really set her off because, I mean, be. you know, she's, how many times has she been reelected? A few at least. I'm yeah, not sure. So she's into it. Oh, yeah. She's going to get, I mean, even if you run against her, Conan, she's likely going to get reelected because Keene's a hardcore Democrat town. It's uh, it's the most kind of lefty town in all of New Hampshire, and I, you it's know, hard I, to challenge this I don't this know because it, you, you, you talk to these people on the radio, and these yeah. are because they're definitely the leftists have gotten into government here in the area. But oh, yeah. I, you know, I frequent the yard sales and the Craigslist, and mm -hmm. the, I'm I'm in the backwoods, and I hear a completely different story from a completely different type of person. How do you get them to turn out at the, the but they voting don't, But they don't polls. vote. Exactly, the exactly, because they've, they've lost faith. They're like, mm -hmm. I'm not even going to waste my time going. I'm not, I'm not going to your stupid school board meeting. I'm not right. going to the polls. Even if it's just a couple of minutes out of my, out of my day, uh, it's that, and that's the worst part right there. And guess what happens? Over the long term, they start to move away. I just talked yes. to I just talked to a great lady and she was a uh, you know she had a nice piece of property she was she was not one of these poor poor people who I, who I usually run across she was out there uh you know on the outskirts of Keene moving sale man where are you moving to moving moving Anywhere. to well she's moving to the next city <laughs> over and I'm like oh mm -hmm. yeah because of the uh the taxes and she's like you you better believe because of the oh, yeah. taxes because you know it's they keep it's, raising them and it's going to kill the town yeah they're, right now the they're talking about they can't get a they can't get a city manager of the uh of the, of the caliber that they're used to, so we're going to have to raise it to two hundred thousand or whatever. The man is already making one hundred thirty before benefits. Come right. on, it's insane! It is insane. You know, uh, there is somebody suggested, and I like this suggestion, Conan, that we should do a what they call it in New Hampshire is a ninety one A request. This is the essentially the uh, the Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, the, yeah. lo the local version of that. Uh, to do a 91A to get a list of all of the potential candidates, everybody that they're vetting to see who they're considering as potential city managers, and then have the activists contact them and say, welcome to Keene. And hey, and, we've heard you're applying. And send them videograms like <laughs> this video we're watching right now. I mean, hey, you come into Keene, guess what you're in, what you're in yeah. store for? Lots of this. So, uh, so you feel I, I'm, I'm pretty much done with the video. There's a little bit more to it. Where uh, in the ver this version, you see at the very end, JP's walking away, and the witness, the person who had said that the state rep flipped him off, recants his statement. He says she might have been pointing. Mm -hmm. So, so JP had the intellectual honesty to leave that in the video, and he also, you know, didn't disagree with the woman when she, you know, disagreed with the witness. So, I don't think he was haranguing her. I don't think he was being rude, but here's what Dennis's comment, and there was a, there are a lot of comments on this particular video. It's over on the Free State Project Facebook page, or not page, group, the Facebook group for the Free State Project, which anybody can go and yeah, join. Yeah, by the way, there are lots of ways to comment on this video, which is which I find 
problematic as far mm-hmm. as social media is concerned because you can have the YouTube comments and you can have the Facebook.com comments right. and you get the you can have multiple face group uh, 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 thread comments. So it's really really becomes hard. That's a problem. Maybe uh, one of our techies here in the area knows a way around that. After watching the video, I'm perplexed, says Dennis. First, whoever recorded it was incredibly rude. It's one thing to assert your rights politely. It's another thing to be an ass. Second, the article text is shrill and childish, which is what I wrote, and startlingly lacking in any explanation of why the police officer is interacting with Ms. Johnson in the first place. So to address first what he said, I'm sorry, JP was not rude at any point. He did call her cranky after she called him dumb, and calling him dumb is an insult. Calling her cranky is more of like an observation of how she's behaving. But if you want to call that an insult, okay, I'll let you have that one. Maybe he shouldn't have said that. But nonetheless, he wasn't calling her names. He wasn't like, you stupid B or, you know, you ugly whatever. Uh, He was fairly calm. He stood for his rights. He asserted his rights. Look, lady, I'm not turning this camera off, especially because you're a state representative. Right. He was fully within his rights. And, and did anyone ever figure out why the woman was stopped? Was she... I suppose we could have asked the cop, but... It was uh, Sunday. There's no parking people out. Was she parked in a handicapped spot? or I mean, It looked like she got a warning, so whatever it was wasn't too serious. She too far out in the highway or something, or I, it was just Main Street. I mean, kudos to Keen Police in this case uh, for actually pulling over the state rep, right? Because yeah. the Keen Police can identify the state representatives, and in fact, what better reason have a state rep played on your to get, to get uh, uh, differential treatment? Well, get- actually, you can get uh, special treatment if you're traveling to and from the state house. Yeah. So there's actually a rule in New Hampshire where. If you are going to or from the state house, wow. they cannot pull you over. Wow, that's that's, yeah. a, that's as bad as bad as the uh, city councils here having their special parking spots available to them, where they don't have to. But they, this, don't, they don't have to pay out. Well, this, in most most city uh, most of the departments here get uh, get that treatment. The state house, however, is not in session on Sunday, so it's clear that she wasn't going to or from <laughs> the state house. She was shopping. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it was not like she can take this the plate off. It's permanently m- mounted on her car, at least during the time that she's a state rep. Uh, There's actually another rule that if you're a state representative and you are giving testimony at the state house, you can break the law while you give testimony. So if you were to, let's say, smoke uh, some weed, you on could the... smoke some weed on the floor of the state oh, house. Cool. Yeah, legally as a as a state representative. Wait, 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 what's the rationale behind that? What does that prove? I have no idea. It's just one of the uh, per, uh, the purviews of being a uh, the the perks or whatever of being a state rep. Or is it so you just? <laughs> uh, oh, wow, that's very strange. Or is it just to not interrupt the? Uh, the commentary where he's like, hey, I got this. I got to get this off my chest. I can't be interrupted by anything. Yeah, I don't know. Including smoking a blunt in front of you guys. <laughs> I and, hope and, someone and, does it someday. Including punching this guy next to me in the face because I hate Gl- oh, Gladys. Hey, right. <laughs> <laughs> so no, she did not get her special treatment to, uh, on this particular occasion. It was outside of the uh, state house meeting hours, and she got pulled over. So kudos to uh, Keen Police for at least treating her like they would treat anybody else and and if you say well she gave a, her a warning actually keen police give warnings pretty often so if you look at uh if you look at the keen police logs they show you every time they pull somebody over and then what happened was a ticket issued was an arrest made was a warning issued frequently they give warnings so it's not like that's an unusual thing either uh, dennis goes on with his critique though he says that uh, the article text is shrill and childish let me share the shrill and childish text with you here Headline, video, state rep to activist, colon, you have no right to record me. In a video recorded on Keene's Main Street Sunday evening, state rep Gladys Johnson calls Keene cop blocks J.P. Freeman dumb and tells him he has no right to record video of her. This after being pulled over by KPD's officer Leslie Ainsworth. Kudos to KPD for not giving the state rep special treatment. And then I show the video. Uh, Johnson, contact info here, doesn't appear to understand the New Hampshire Constitution's Bill of Rights, Article 22, which protects the freedom of the press, or Article 8, which says government agents will be open and accountable. Shrill yet? Sounds like a news headline we'll to me. We'll come back with the rest of it here in hour number two. It's Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Kid, let me paint you a picture. Tuesday night, your cog belt goes bust. 
Who will help you get what you need fast without the hoops, hurdles, or headaches? Granger, that's who. I love Granger. They got a wide variety of products and solutions. Granger makes it easy to get everything we need and answers for when we're not sure what the answer is. Now, kid, let me paint you another picture. It looks like a mop, a basement bathroom, and you all over it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, July 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.82 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,106 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $280. Antiwar.com reports, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, at least 26 people were killed in a round of airstrikes against the Islamic State-held town of Manbej yesterday, and dozens of others were wounded. Many of the toll were civilians, including children. Though there is no official confirmation of who carried out the airstrikes, the observatory said that it was most likely the Syrian military. The U.S. and Allied warplanes have also attacked the town in recent days, however. Manbej is in the Aleppo province, part of the Islamic State territory near the Turkish border, which is not contiguous to the main territory. The Islamic State sought to link the two segments with offensives against the Kurdish city of Kobani, but has so far been unsuccessful. The U.S. has been keen to attack the region to help fund the Kurds with their offensives against the Islamic State, while the Syrian military is trying to slow the Islamic State expansion toward the Aleppo provincial capital, an important city half controlled by them and half controlled by other rebel forces. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports officials in drought-stricken California have levied a $1.5 million fine against a group of farmers and residents with senior water rights for allegedly diverting water illegally, according to the State Water Board. The State Water Resources Control Board announced Monday the Byron Bethany Irrigation District, located in Tracy, California, just outside of San Francisco, must pay the fine or request a hearing with the Water Board within 20 days. The agency says the district continued to use water from an intake channel at the bank's pump plant for nearly two weeks after new water restrictions were put in place. Those new restrictions, ordered June 12th, curtailed water used by farmers with water rights dating back to 1903. Byron Bethany, along with a number of other irrigation districts, sued the Water Board, challenging its authority to curtail their water rights, which date back to before 1914, the date the state originated its water rights system, according to the Sacramento Bee. The board said Byron Bethany diverted more than 2,000 acre-feet of water during the two weeks it was allegedly out of compliance. The last time the state ordered restrictions for pre-1914 right holders was during a drought in the 1970s. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Cuban flag was raised over Havana's embassy in Washington on Monday for the first time in 54 years as the United States and Cuba formally restored relations, opening a new chapter of engagement between the former Cold War foes. Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez presided over the re-inauguration of the embassy, a milestone in the diplomatic thaw that began with an announcement by President Barack Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro on December 17th. Underscoring differences that remain between the United States and the communist-ruled Cuba, Rodriguez seized the opportunity to urge Obama to use executive powers to do more to dismantle the economic embargo, the main stumbling block to full normalization of ties. For its part, the Obama administration pressed Havana for improvement on human rights. But even with continuing friction, the reopening of embassies in each other's capitals provided the most concrete symbols yet of what has been achieved after more than two years of negotiations between two governments that had long shunned each other. Rodriguez said at the reopening ceremony, the historic events we are living today will only make sense with the removal of the economic, commercial, and financial blockade, which causes so much deprivation and damage to our people. The return of occupied territory in Guantanamo and respect for the sovereignty of Cuba. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Our very own Tracy met farmer Ray Kimball, who says that his horse, Franklin, has the ability to speak full sentences. When did you first realize he could talk? Well, I'd hear him saying things when I was sleeping, and then I'd go out to the barn and we'd have some real conversations. Can we talk to Franklin? Uh, he can't wait to meet you. <laughs> Say hi, Franklin. What's that? <laughs> That's a good one. What, what did he say? He said, who's the pretty lady? Aw. <laughs> Franklin, do you like living on the farm? Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Did he well, say something? Tracy, you live here now. I spent a cozy night at Ray's farmhouse in a room he called the altar. I learned that the farmer has a whole lot more on his mind than just a talking horse. You are my beloved. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free and join us here. We're talking about... Activist tactics, as usual, when somebody does some activism and does it in a public manner, they get all kinds of critique. Uh, oops, sorry, Conan. I Not only to... do you screw with the tactics of the uh, the activists in the area, because they've got their own way of doing things, but you also mess with the locals and the, the establishment. And what do you mean the, when the... you say you? Who's you? you? When you, as an activist, any kind of activist. Okay. You I mean, the so, listener so, or so, so... you, Ian Freeman? You as an activist, right. if you're trying to get anything done, yeah. you're gonna piss someone off. Oh yeah, you're gonna piss. You're gonna the natives, the other activists, the uh, the, the 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 folks in power. They don't want they don't want you coming in and changing how things have been done. Uh, and some people are like, well, you, we don't want to burn bridges, we don't want to poison wells, so you got to do it this way. You got to write letters to the editor. You've got to. You can't be people get, get upset about that too. You can't be getting too. in people's faces and and calling them cranky. I mean, because you're just gonna. You're ruining your. You're ruining the, the the the. You're ruining the movement. Well, they say here. There's uh, Dennis Goddard. He's a frequent caller, or frequent enough. If you've been a long time listener to Free Talk Live, you know Dennis's voice. He's frequently calling about things uh, going on in the state house here in New Hampshire, talking about how politics can actually make a difference here. And I agree with him on all of those things. He actually persuaded me to uh, get involved in the political system here in New Hampshire. When I moved here as part of the Free State Project, this libertarian migration that you and I are both members of, Conan, 
uh, I was ready to quit voting. I was ready to, you know, call it, I'm done with this. This is a waste of time. But Dennis convinced me that it isn't a waste of time in New Hampshire, and I'd, I'm certain he's correct about yeah, that. Yeah, especially New Hampshire, where there's, right. you know, you have more options. And that's because when you're a state rep in New Hampshire, there's 400 of them, so they don't have very much power. It's easy to get elected if, you know, all you're really marketing yourself to is 3,000 people. You do the division, you know, 1.4 million people divided by 400, it comes around, comes up to around 3,500 or something like that per state rep on average. And so, you know, they, state reps can win an election for $500. Now, of course, that $500 is more than you'll get paid as a state rep, right? So this is not a money-making uh, expedition here as uh, as doing politics. Yeah, I find it funny that representatives in the area actually have to fill out, like, uh, forms claiming how much uh, contributions they received. I mean, it's like, come on. You man. actually don't if you earn, or not if you not earn, but it's if you a, it's receive. It's under a certain amount. Yeah. Right. If, you, if you're if you over $500 in contributions, there is a form. It's not particularly complicated. But uh, I ran a, uh, an election for governor in 2014 just for fun. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't have any illusion that I was going to be able to win the primary. But uh, I spent $2.50 and received $100 uh, for my con- my campaign. So I didn't have to report anything. Right. And I was running for governor. Yeah, I think it's like, well, I think for reps it's like 5000 or something. Anything over 5000 you have to report it and then fill I it. I would be shocked if that were the case. I think it's probably 500 for them as well. Because if it's 500 for the governor, it's going to be 500 for a, for a state rep. So you can make a difference here. Dennis is right about a lot of the things he says, but I think he's absolutely wrong saying that JP was out of line in this video. If you want to see it for yourself, go to freekeen.com. I think the first article on the page as we're speaking right now, it's a quick little video. It's about two and a half minutes long, and it shows this state representative just haranguing JP for recording video of her getting pulled over by a police officer on the main street of Keene, and JP's getting all kinds of heat for this. There are videos that have come out of Free Keene that deserve, you know, uh, you know, complaints from people like Goddard. I mean, like the may, maybe like the Derek J uh, crossing guard lady with the sign. I mean, they're that treating was, JP like this is the crossing well, that's, guard. Yeah, video. exactly. I don't think this is. Well, this, she's an old lady. The crossing guard of, was an old lady. So you can't pick on old maybe ladies. Maybe that's guess. what it is. Maybe if you want to be a state rep and, you know, get things done, you've got to be an old lady because no one will ever come and question you. So, ever. So Dennis had said that JP was rude, and I'm sorry, the woman is rude in the video. The state rep is the one who's rude by telling him to stop recording, leave her. JP you know, has a Boston beat. accent. Maybe that's what it was. Is he it just, Boston? He, I thought it was like. New he's York. got a, He's got a New England accent. He's got that. You know, hey, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? We gonna you gonna you gonna mess with me, huh? I'm if gonna, he's even raising his voice at all, it's just so he can be heard because he's not right next to her. He's you know he's in Main Street. It's loud. There's a lot of traffic going by. I don't I don't know why JP sounds like he is uh, uh, harassing this old lady. I'm just I don't think I'm he just, does. I'm just, I'm just, he, I no he no does. no he doesn't. He doesn't no. to me. But right. he's but he's got that going on. So maybe it's about his accent. Maybe, uh, maybe he sounds like he's harassing through his accent. I don't know. So further, Dennis Goddard, the critic here, says that the article text what I wrote. To, to present the video on Free Keen. I usually just write so a paragraph. So this is yours or JP? This is JP's video. I but was no, not wait, there. Wait, but you actually presented it. I wrote it. the you, article. You were the, you had, it was your commentary, your highlights. Right. So here's, so I basically said, look, this state rep, Gladys Johnson, doesn't appear to understand the New Hampshire Constitution's Bill of Rights, Article 22, which protects the freedom of the press, or Article 8, which says government agents will be open and accountable. Now, you said that so far, and we've read the first two paragraphs, that this is not shrill. That this is not uh, what is the other word he used? Uh, shrill and childish. It sounds okay? it sounds newsworthy. It sounds like you've hitting all the buttons. You're getting all the the important parts out. So here's the the one more and, paragraph. And you're doing them in small words so the peeps so the little people can understand. All right. So here's the last paragraph. It's fairly short. This is certainly not how a state representative should behave, especially in front of a camera. You'd think she'd know something about the freedom to record, considering she co-sponsored the bill to mandate police body cameras (laughs) currently retained in committee. So I link to the bill. You can go and read it if you want. However, her, her bill does not allow the public access to the police footage, which is a huge issue and goes to show that Johnson is just an arch status to the core. Right. So she doesn't support police accountability. She doesn't want you to be able to access the footage that they have if if this bill were to pass, and it hasn't yet passed. Um, so she's not necessarily a, a fan of being able to record the police, obviously. She thinks the police should be recording their own stuff, but keeping it for their own internal purposes. Yeah, that video should be going straight to New Hampshire Police right. Raw. Dot org. <laughs> okay, so I called her an arch statist, but that's what I believe about her, right? Like, that's not shrill. 
Uh, going on, her New Hampshire Liberty Alliance report card for 2014 ranks her as a D minus, and then I link to that in case you want to look at it. In the yet to be released 2015 rankings, which came out on Sunday, but the actual publishing of it didn't happen, I think, until late last night. Uh, in the li- uh, yet to be released 2015 rankings, Johnson scored as dereliction of duty, meaning she missed 70 percent or more of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance scored votes. The NHLA recommends she step down from office as a result of missing and now, what so year many that, important we, votes. What year was that? Because someone said that she was in the hospital for like a whole season. Uh, uh, dereliction last... of duty. That was 2015. So that's this year. Yeah, she might have actually been in the hospital. I don't have that detail. I didn't know that. Yeah, right? Well, all right. Either way, not shrill, not childish. That's it. That's the end of the article. The NHLA, I th- how do I know they recommend she step down from office? Because when I was reading in their documentation about what, is, what does der mean, because uh, you know, next to her, uh, her grades, they got these grades for all the state reps. It's A through F, and then there's D-E-R. So I went and I checked. Der you know, is like der, der, der. As in dereliction oh, of okay, duty. Gotcha. And so when I read the description of what does that mean to be a derelict of duty, Swell, 70%. So I'm basically just putting in the NHLA's description Did here. you happen to see any more durs and uh, behind? There was like t- a couple. Cu- a couple, There okay. weren't that many of them. Not not just in Cheshire County, but I mean a couple of all of because, New Hampshire. Because, by the way, that would be my only problem. Even if they're paying for my gas, driving from here to Concord. It's brutal. Uh, yeah. Whew. Especially in the wintertime, Conan. These, these uh, state representatives, when they meet and do their business... It's happening during the wintertime. It doesn't happen any other months of the year. So I'd be you, like, man, I, I yeah. got Skype. Come on now. I mean, come on. It's 2015. <laughs> Let me Skype it. Well, you know, one of the things they'll do, apparently, is the the, uh, the local reps here in Keene will carpool. So that way they don't have to pay for uh, gas each way, but they I'd all be get like, the gas I'd be stipend. like, at least, let, hey, local reps, here's, what, five plus two of us, seven of us? Yeah. Let's just all go to city council and use their Granica system, you know, the TV <laughs> system there. We can all Skype in at the same time and have a little round table of it. Come on. They're now. not set up I for mean, that. how much money would we save New Hampshire in gas alone That's if we would do something like that? Probably quite a bit. A lot, yeah. So, uh, okay, so your opinion, uh, Conan, a shrill, childish article here? I, as far as the video is concerned, I've never been a fan. But the article, the text of the article. The text is great. It's, it's newsworthy. It's, inf- it's it, informative. It, 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 it hits all the points. It's informative. Right. Um, I don't have any problem with it. Maybe the her listing her grading and the I don't no you know that's what? informative. No, no, screw that. It it's all good. It's all good. That gives you perspective on who this lady is and why it matters that she's being held held to account. Now pat now past articles, past videos, you know maybe not. Maybe I can't get behind. And maybe he is just maybe this guy is feeding off of. You know, that's what I think. I wonder if this had happened in Concord or the Lakes region and somebody else had put a very similar video out, would it have gotten the same exactly. response? We'll come back. You can share your thoughts here. Coming up, a restaurateur targets a toddler and yells at the toddler in the restaurant. Conan's got the story. It leads to a larger conversation about bad customer service or good customer service. I hate kids. How do you handle this situation? 855-450 freeze our number. It's Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Identity theft is real. So real, it could be making you its next victim right now. At the gas pump, bank, or store where you shop with your credit card, bad guys with RFID scanners can peer into your wallet or purse from a short distance away. Stealing information from your RFID-enabled credit or debit cards, passports, room keys, and ID cards without you even knowing it. Stop the bad guys now with an RFID-blocking wallet from ID Stronghold. ID Stronghold founded the entire RFID-blocking industry over 10 years ago. Their stylish sleeves, clutch purses, and wallets are shielded throughout. The 
best you can buy at great pricing, as low as $14.99. Don't wait until your wallet needs replacing. Protect your identity now. Click IDStronghold.com or call 1-800-610-2770. That's 1-800-610-2770. ID Stronghold, the original RFID wallet company. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, join us. Here, toll free or via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, and you do need to send a contact request first. If you haven't yet done so, we'll approve it. Uh, then we'll, uh, you know, get easy. It's easy for you at that point to call us here on Skype. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian and Conan. Conan's here, courtesy of Black Sheep Rising. It is a monthly video cast coming out of our very own Keene, New Hampshire, focusing on the activists here, the local kind of political scene sometimes, local news, commentary. We, we cover anything uh, that we find uh, thrilling and uh, and fun to listen to. For example, Mike called in first thing uh, this evening. One of the, he, he, he enjoyed the uh, the, contra- uh, the, uh, the the thugs at Porkfest. He didn't enjoy them, but he enjoyed Ian uh, confronting these <laughs> bad boys. We talked about it for a good 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, I wasn't uh, alone on that On one. the last show, and we had uh, four of us talking about it, and we really uh, broke it down, uh, made it easy to digest, and you know, yep. we, we brought our own spin, of course. Uh, that was last uh, episode. A uh, new episode coming uh, this Sunday. Go to uh, f- the Facebook page, Facebook slash uh you guys know. record on sundays but we you record don't put on it out sundays Sunday. you know i put it out you know a couple of days to a week later mm-hmm. you can watch the live stream we do Ooh. have a couple of diehard fans who love the live stream they love the comment during cool um i can't personally watch uh, live streaming i think it's uh, you know because i i like to put the, the good quality i like i edit everything together uh, i put, I yeah, put yeah. The, the videos that always get live streams too YouTube. rough for your yeah you, yeah live streams a little too rough for me Go to blacksheeprising.org. Check out the show. There's also an audio podcast you can subscribe. To. Correct. If you can't watch the videos, uh, like again, like me, there is the audio option. Listen to it while on your drive or uh, you know at work. Uh, that's how I would prefer to do it. But hey, get the video option. It's at YouTube as well. All right, let's go to your calls and thoughts. We have Pete. He's on the line in Pennsylvania via Skype. Hello, Pete. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Welcome, sir. Go Thank ahead. Uh, so last night. Uh, 
you guys were talking about how uh, Chris Cantwell had sort of made up with the police and uh, how he sort of reconciled about his use of a firearm, and maybe that's not the best idea all the time. And you had mentioned something, Ian, that uh, kind of struck me wrong, and I wanted okay. to uh, just understand more. So you had mentioned the ph- philosophy of when you take it, when you show a firearm or you're going to use a firearm, you know, don't take it out of the holster or don't don't brandish it unless you're going to use it. And then you uh, said the other philosophy could be, you know, if you are prepared to use it. And I just want to be clear about that sort of distinction there, because the the former sounds very dangerous to me. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm I sorry. I don't remember what I what I was uh, told from some people in the gun community, but this is not an uncommon belief. And it's one okay. or the other, and maybe both are fairly common out there. There's there is a belief, and please, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I, there is a belief amongst the uh, the gun owning community that if you're going to pull a gun on somebody, you should you you, you know if you're going to pull a gun, you should fire the gun. Basically, is is sort of the uh, well, the rule out there, and, and I don't agree with that rule, and now, neither does Chris Cantwell. Now, I mean, he thought he used to believe in that, but then he realized that that's not a, an appropriate thing to do in all instances. I, I, oh, okay, I was good. raised with the opinion that you, if you ever point a gun at anything, you your intentions are to fire on it. You never. That's what you, I'm talking you, about. You never. You, you can you can pull your gun out of your holster. Yep. But you keep it down at your side, mm-hmm. and you have it on the you have it on the ready. But if you point that at something, you, your intentions are to fire on it, and that's you know that should never ever come unless but, you're dealing with a, a serious threat. Just having it in your hand thing. should be. The, Chris pulled the gun, pointed it, and did not fire. All right, right? that was yeah. probably so, a little overboard. So he did, what, what that would imply is that you can never take someone prisoner, you know, by you know at gunpoint, because as soon as the yeah. gun's in your hand and you point it at them, you know, your free will goes out the window and you shoot them right in the chest. It's a bad rule. I mean, right? But that's uh, but that's a real that's a relatively common thing i've heard it multiple times and i don't know that it's a rule it's like etiquette it's like this is this you yeah. just don't do these things this is not proper procedure but i but i don't know because i'm I, I, i'm a i'm not a serious gun owner so i don't really know i don't and i don't and i don't carry by the way so i don't know what the rules really are i, w- I would say i'm a serious gun owner i have my concealed carry permit mm-hmm. um but i would say you know if someone's pointing at you it's safe to assume they're intending to to shoot you right but Pointing the gun at someone else does not necessarily imply that you're going to shoot them, nor should you shoot them. So I, I've never come across the uh, the terminology where, uh, you know, don't point the gun at someone unless you're going to shoot them. Sometimes you have to point it at someone in case you have to shoot them, you know, in a split second. And you don't okay. necessarily have your finger on the trigger. Um, now, now, so that, now, I will say, if you do end up pointing your gun at someone, you still don't want to shoot them. I no. would say that, yeah, exactly. No, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have all sorts of laws. No, you're gonna, yeah, you can't. You're never, you're never gonna live that down. You're you're guaranteed unless unless nobody's around. You're guaranteed, you know, going to jail. Not necessarily for prison, but at least you're going to jail. You're gonna have to go see a you know a judge. So. Yeah. But yeah, so so last resort. It is the absolute yes. last resort. Do not point your gun at someone unless you intend to actually. Uh, Shoot that person, cut them up, and take them home and eat them. Yeah, and or I, bury and them the, in your basement. And because, like you said, you can't. You're not going to live it down. The point that was made yesterday is that there's a big difference between you're going to shoot someone and it is your intention to shoot someone, right? Because your intention can change in that moment yes. uh, if the person backs off. Or it's no a longer. it's a willingness to move your finger two inches to the trigger mm-hmm. and and stop the threat. So, so you've never heard anyone say in the gun community that if you're going to pull your gun, you should shoot the gun. At no. That point. No. Yeah, I have. No, I, haven't I don't either. know who, I haven't who brings either. this up. That's that's absolute madness. It is madness, but that doesn't yeah. mean it's not a. It's not something that people say. That's kind of like you know what? It's it's that's it's kind tough of, talk. No, that's kind of in line with the if you draw your samurai sword, it's got to taste blood. Mm, yeah, it's tough talk, right? Like, so you, so you can only like show the metal. You can't if you pull it all the way out. It's it has to be dipped in the blood it, of your it's victim. Go time. Yeah, yeah it's go okay. time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there you go, Pete. La- Anything else? Last thing. Um, just to dispel the myth about the uh, trigger pulls, the weight of uh, force that's required to activate a trigger on a revolver versus a semi-automatic pistol. Um, you know, I did some quick research. Um, the standard, the, what I mean by trigger pull is how much you, does your finger have to press in order to activate the trigger. Yep. And, and, many, all, and uh, all guns are different, and you can actually, yep. you know, work on that and, and, and lessen it on guns. Yep. If you, if we, that's if you true. So just just for some clarification, your standard police issue Glock, um, you know, sorry, factory Glock, is going to have a five and a half pound trigger pull, 
but frequently jurisdictions will add on additional springs to make that, uh, or a heavier spring to make that trigger pull even harder. Hmm. So um, standard New York trigger would bring it to 11 pounds uh, just to prevent, you know, to actually remove any sort of uh, doubt that this action of pulling the trigger was anything but intentional. Mm -hmm. um, your Colt um, Python 357 that you got, this sort of iconic pistol, that has a nine pound trigger pull if, it's, if the hammer is already down. But if the hammer is pulled back initially, you know, some, you see somebody cock the hammer with their thumb, yep. that would have a four pound trigger pull. And then uh, I looked up the mil spec, the military specification for an AR is between four and a half and nine and a half or five and a half and nine and a half pounds. Wow. So everyone except the New York police have, you know, regular standard uh, trigger pull, but yep. they've got, you said 11 pounds. So if 11. Yeah. Now what about a revolver? What's a trigger pull on that? Well, the, the, the Colt Python that I quoted, the 1969 version, uh, eight pounds um, if it hammers cocked and four pounds. Mm. Sorry, eight pounds uncocked, mm -hmm. four pounds cocked. So, so you're saying there there uh, there's some comparable ones because I know when I fired a semi, it's like really easy to pull a trigger uh, yep. on those compared to uh, a revolver where you you know if you have to actuate the hammer. Hey, thanks Pete for the call. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. We're coming up on Free Talk Live at 855 450 free. Now, a twice as nice Twin Kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait! 
there's more. If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. We've got time for you if you want to join us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Comment on the activist discussion, guns, whatever is on your mind. Also, we've got Skype. The Skype username is lrn.fm. Hey, maybe you want to get some Bitcoin. The price has gone up over the last couple of months. It was around 230-something. It's now in the like 270, 280 range. Uh, per that's U.S. dollars per Bitcoin. Now you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin. You can buy forty dollars worth of Bitcoin over at ExpressCoin.com. Any amount up to forty dollars. If you use code FTL, like Free Talk Live, code FTL at ExpressCoin.com, you will get that cryptocurrency with no fee. Normally, when you when you transfer one currency to another, there's a fee involved. Not at ExpressCoin. That's because they want to get Bitcoin into your hands, so to speak. Of course. It's, a digital currency, so you can't actually really touch it. Uh, but you can go to expresscoin.com, get your cryptocurrency with money order or check, and you can do it easily. It's safe, it's fast, and it's inexpensive. Start at expresscoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. You can also get some altcoins like Litecoin or Dogecoin, but Bitcoin's the real attraction, in my opinion. Expresscoin.com, you do it from your smartphone, via their app, or just go straight through their website and get your cryptocurrency with no fee, up to $40 worth over at expresscoin.com. If you go above 40, then you're looking at a 3% fee, which is super reasonable. Uh, it's probably one of the best fees you'll find out there in the business. Go to expresscoin.com and don't forget coupon code FTL. Whether or not you're getting uh, 40 or more or less, use the coupon code anyway. That way they know that it's Free Talk Live that is sending it or sending you to them. So expresscoin.com, code FTL. Let's go to Andy. He is on the line via Skype. Andy, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Conan. Hi there, Ian Conan. My name's Andy. Yes, I'm from Long Island. Welcome. I want to talk about uh, credit scores today. I All think right. they should be abolished. I think they're a joke. Why? Uh, you know, the scores are, are completely almost like random, and I'm supposed really? to go around using my time and money to correct their mistakes. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I mean, have you encountered this? Have You've gone through the process of trying to rectify errors on your credit report? No, actually, I've given up on that. But, you know, the, the thing that gets me is the fact that they abuse these scores and they're not even being used for credit. I mean, I try to get an apartment and they use the score for that. Or I try to get a job, you know, and, and they're trying to base my employment record on, on my spending habits. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And how are you supposed to have a, a job if your credit score is low? You can't bring the score back up unless you have a job to pay off your credit. And it, mm. it's crazy. It's definitely a, a, a cycle that you can get stuck in, a deep, dark hole. Uh, but, I mean, how would you propose that uh, lenders, money lenders, or, say, for example, uh, apartment owners who are who have, you know, their personal property on the line. Right, they're lending you a resource. Yeah, they're lending you a resource. How do you propose that these individuals or, or, or uh, companies protect their, their resource? Well, what, what did they do before credit scores? I mean, they did background checks. They found out if you were employed. They found out, you know, I mean, you could do basic background checks and find out if somebody's worthy of having an apartment. I mean, you know, please. And, and, and of course, most uh, uh, apartment lenders worth their salt will actually have you go get that uh, background check. It's like $7 most places or whatever. Oh, really? And actually bring it to them so you can find out, you know, you know who, who they stiffed. Uh, during the years, or are there are there your criminal background or whatnot? That so, way, the apartment owner isn't paying for a bunch of credit score checks. Exactly, because they'll get a whole bunch of them. But if yeah. they, you can actually prevent a lot of uh, a riffraff 
uh, from coming to your uh, from you from coming to your doorstep in the in the get go. So I mean, did something happen, Andy, where you know your credit score went into the tank? Where you, did you have a period of lo- a time in your life where you weren't particularly responsible? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I got laid off, and uh, you know, you lose your job and you fall back behind on your credit score, mm. and then every time you look for a job, they're telling you, well, your credit score is low, and, and they won't give you a job. So how how are you supposed to get I back have, on I track? I have never they heard. They can't I, tell I, you that, can they? I didn't know that employers checked. They 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 can do a background check, but I didn't know they checked your credit. Oh yeah, they you know they do everything. They look at your Facebook, you know, see what kind of I knew political that. background yeah. you have. They do everything, you know that. Well, I mean, it's it is an indicator of responsibility, right? I mean, if somebody is an irresponsible person, maybe I don't want that person working for me. It's a rudimentary thing. I mean, obviously, it's it's not fair to judge somebody today by who they were twenty years ago. If when you were in college or whatever, you were just spending all kinds of money on a credit card and then you never paid it off, then you know that's going to look bad. But if you're forty and you've got better financial habits, but yet that credit score sort of chased you along throughout your entire entire life and you've never been able to rectify it, uh, then it's not fair to judge somebody based on the past. But unfortunately, you know, when you are looking at a hundred different applications, if you think about the job market in some places, there's a lot of people that want a job and they might be, you know, there might be 200 applicants for one position. This is just one way uh, to cross a bunch of names off the list and get to the best possible applicants. I mean, it's not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not happy about that for you because it sounds like it's pretty frustrating. But if you look at it from the employer's perspective, it makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, I don't know the the complete inner workings of all the the the, the I's and T's that get crossed during a credit check. But I I know, for example, that if you don't pay a, a utility bill, I mean that's. That's ten points, twenty points, right there. Wow. I mean, it, it you can go, it can go down really, really quick. But I mean, what what are the other options? Because I feel well, there's some sort of reputation. It, it, yeah, as long as they're not being manipulated by the people in power and to to do to do ill uh, to us folks, I I think it's a great thing. I <laughs> I. I, I well, what I, I'm, it, I'm, very, I'm very. By the way, I'm very proud of my credit rating. It's very. It's up there. But I take good care of it too. I don't I'm, even know what mine is, but I presume it's good because I'm never you, late with with payments. And you and you uh, just yeah. We know that you have good credit because you just happened to have uh, go well, through with a deal just now. That's a, that's that was something else entirely. It didn't require a, a okay. credit check. But uh, but you know. Andy, what was your experience like in trying to rectify it? I mean, you you say you say you've given up, so it obviously was frustrating. But you yeah, what did mean, you first try? First of all, it's an invasion of privacy. I mean, who are these? You got three companies, right? And they're supposedly yeah. keeping track of, of you know, your TransUnion, Ex- Equifax, and Experian. Right, right, right. So you got these guys. I mean, I, I, if it was my medical background, I mean, that's that's supposed to be private, right? What's the difference if, if you know you got companies? Well, the they difference is it's useful me. to know this stuff. I mean, if somebody is fiscally irresponsible, you don't want to give that person a loan. Well, it's useful to know my my medical background too. If they're going to hire me on, based or, on or that, to, or to give you health insurance, I would. If I was a health insurance provider, I would I would demand that you give me your health background so that I could. Uh, uh, right. Char- that's why char- they ask char- you if, charge you accordingly. That's why they ask you if you smoke cigarettes when you call and you apply for health insurance. Right, but you guys are libertarians. Do you think that's that's the right thing to do? I mean, well, I'm, I, this, I'm I'm all about the utopian society where we don't have to rely on regulations and government to take care of us. This is a prime example of what will take care of us. I I rely on credit. I mean, I mean, how do you tell some guy just moved into town? He just come. He just got off his horse and he wants to get rent a room from you. Well, how do, how am I supposed to know whether he's worth his salt? If he's got enough cash, I don't care. Well, well, maybe maybe I'll charge him from month to month. What? Maybe he left his last uh, uh, domicile in complete ruin because he's, you know, how how am I supposed to know that? I need background checks. I need credit checks. Otherwise, I don't know him from Adam. I think a background check is different than a credit check. I mean, a background check, I could find out who his friends are, who he's working for, you know, things like that. I mean, that's what they used to do in the old days. I mean, there's nothing wrong. A credit I, score is about your spending habits. It has nothing to do with, with you know, you, how you how you uh, behave in it. Yeah, I agree as far as the employee. But the, it's the, an the, indicator. The employers are concerned. Yeah, I, if I was an employer, I wouldn't be checking your, your credit rating. I would be checking your background rating. If I was a money lender, I was going to mm-hmm. lend you, a, you know, a, a mortgage amount, I would most definitely want to know, you know, whether you – uh, bankrupt when you were 20 or something. Well, or... just to be clear on something, uh, Andy, being a libertarian, and I think Conan and I both qualify for that, 
doesn't yeah. mean you have a viewpoint on uh, you know a, a certain specific view on privacy matters. You can be a libertarian and be mm-hmm. for privacy, like be super you know for privacy, super super privacy, or you can be a libertarian and be for you know being completely open. I mean, there's being a libertarian just means you don't want to use the violence and the the force of of uh, the government or any kind of violence, aggressive violence against peaceful people. Um, oh, I, I, to get I, your I way. I just don't think the scores are accurate to begin with. So they're, they're just completely I think there are some problems with the credit system. There's no doubt about that. And maybe we'll see some better, more robust reputation system in the future. Until then, this is about all we got. Thanks for the call tonight, Andy. I appreciate it. Uh, good topic, though. I know a lot of people are dealing with this and trying to clean up their credit, and it is not an easy task it from could, what I've heard. It, it could stick with you. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. You know what rubs millions of people the wrong way? Their thighs. Shaq talks gold bond friction defense. Skin friction is quite an affliction. On your legs, arms, whether you're running a 5K or just running upstairs. And gold bond friction defense is... Soothing. Indeed. It's non-greasy, moisturizes, and helps like nobody's business. Because your thighs rubbing together is nobody's business. Gold bond friction defense. Defense starts now. Your thighs will thank you. Oh, boy. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy, and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm
This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We've talked about activist tactics that are controversial, apparently uh, confronting a state rep for being very rude and demanding someone turn off a video camera is considered a controversial thing among some in the liberty movement. But that's the nature of doing activism, is you're going to ruffle some feathers if it's effective. Uh, We've seen that also recently. There was a news headline here in Keene actually about, um, you know, that uh, there was a shooting that happened at the military recruiting offices down in, was it Tennessee, Uh, Conan? Somewhere south. Yeah, I think... Some recruitment center got shot up, and of course, uh, well, so there have been a lot of uh, uh, activists uh, one, in one shape or a form uh, who have uh, gone out of their way uh, to go and protect these recruitment centers who are not allowed to arm their soldiers, That's which right. is which is ridiculous because uh, you know, and I don't really want to bring more standing troops in, on U.S. soil, but it's it's very ridiculous that you have. Uh, individual, you have military who go to who go through the training uh, to learn a weapon, learn how to fire it, learn yep. how to defend themselves, learn how to kill bad guys, and then they sit defenseless. Whether, whether you, yeah, whether you believe that's the right thing to do or not, and then they and then they recruit on American soil and they can't defend themselves. So, anyways, these and a lot of them are a lot of them are previous military, by the way. The guys here in Keene, I think both of them were previous military. So what's going on is our uh, friend of the show, sometimes co-host Chris, uh, Chris Not Cantwell. So not Cantwell. <laughs> he calls himself Chris Not Cantwell on the air. Um, he is actually one of the people. He's uh, with the Oath Keepers of New Hampshire. Good group. He's gone out uh, as well as like a few other folks, and they've been standing guard with open carrying uh, what appear to be rifles or machine guns in the the front of this recruiting center here in Keene. It's also apparently going on in Concord, uh, maybe some other areas of New Hampshire. It's going on on all over the U.S. Yeah, and so uh, is it Oath Keepers all over the place? No, 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 no. It's... uh Oath Keepers in our area. I'm not sure okay. uh, how many of the other groups are uh, of the same group. Yeah. So th- this is also getting controversy within the liberty movement. There are some people who are saying that— uh, How can know, these yahoos stand out? I mean, what, what what's next? Were they going to be standing out in front of Walmart protecting us from bad guys? I well, mean, there's also the viewpoint that they're making it look like, you know, they're sort of worshiping the military to some extent, like that, oh, let's protect our heroes in the military, that kind of thing. But I think— and I understand where the crit- critics are coming from and everything, but I think that this is actually good activism because what they're doing is, like Chris, who's a liberty guy, like this guy, no doubt, he's got his cred, he's hung out at your house, Conan, great guy. Uh, this is a liberty guy. He's, he, he understands the Constitution. He understands right. the oath of office that he signed on to, uh, which, by the way, if that's all they did, they'd be great because they'd be actually be protecting us from bad guys. What they're not doing is protecting us from bad guys. They're actually out there making us more bad guys through their actions, following, you know, you know, corporate instructions or, you know, the big wigs out there who are, who are you know, throwing the uh, these new wars at us every single year, you know, fighting wars that uh, they don't have anything to do with anything except I'm, making more bad guys. I'm no fan of military recruiters, but I don't think you have to be a fan of the military recruiters to advocate that they should also be able to defend themselves. They're human beings. They should have the right to self-defense just like everybody else. Now, is it some sort of army rule or whatever, like some kind of military rule that the recruiters can't carry? It's not a New Hampshire rule, is it? I I do not believe that that is I believe that is an internal rule as uh it's not like it's not a law it's just a rule it's so, a military rule military yeah. code of justice but I mean right? I mean even even on posts they will there are lots and lots of weapons everywhere and they are all locked really behind closed doors you were in the army right yeah and they they've all got uh, the identification numbers and when you go sign one out they know exactly where weapons are going you, it's very very hard to get very ammunition controlled. but okay. i mean yeah there's lots of empty weapons everywhere wow. but it's very 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 controlled well yeah i mean i remember that story about the shooting down at fort hood a few years ago right where there was the guy who was on the military base got his hands on some weapon and then just shot people and they couldn't defend themselves yeah, it was probably his weapon yeah. not something that he got off of the uh, off of, off a of post so I think the you know there are activists who are criticizing Chris because of his involvement in this, but he's one of the main guys who's setting this up, and I think that what he's doing here is good activism because 
he's doing activism that's going to reach a different group of people. And what than, page was he in on the Sentinel and then on WMUR? I suspect and all the, he was in the, on the front page. There you go. There's one more example of someone, you but know. If, but if you think about it, the, the kind of people that this is going to reach, standing out in front of a military recruiting center, talking about the Constitution, talking about the right to bear arms, talking about Oath Keepers, uh, Oath Keepers which is a group that essentially says, hey, I've sworn an oath to this Constitution. That means I'm not going to violate it. I'm meaning, not going to. I'm not going to take your weapons from you. Right. I'm not going to put you in internment camps i'm not going to violate your rights in any way i'm here to protect you and that's that's usually what happens you know the first thing uh when 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 a government when a tyranny takes over guess who they use to do the taking over the they military use, they and use the military and they and they throw you in camps and they throw you in uh you know uh, in trailer uh, car, uh, trailer carts you know cattle cars it, 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 and oath keepers are all about no. That's it, we're not here to protect right. the tyranny. We're here to protect the people first and, I think and foremost, that's and, an and the Constitution. That's an important message to get out there. And you're going to be reaching more of the kind of the righty types, the the gun rights folks, the military supporters. And if you can reach military people with the the oath keepers message, that is that hits them in their paradigm, right? That's a place where you can sort of put the wedge in and explain more about the ideas of freedom to those folks. So the kind of people that Chris and his oath keeper friends are reaching here with this outreach project is a different kind of people than I might reach if I went out and did uh, marijuana civil disobedience, right? There's that's a whole different section of society that's going to see this activism and appreciate it, but yet he is getting uh, you know torn apart by a couple of people on some of the activist forums, at least one person who's just flipping out over this like oh you're not principled enough you shouldn't be a, you should be dancing on the flag and you know standing guard out in front of a movie theater if you want to protect people or whatever yeah we're, we're, we're talking about militia chris yeah. you know he is not he is in no way shape or form trying to he's de defending government as we know it he's not defending government he right. is he's all about it, it, being a part of his community uh working within his community and of course, being a part of his militia, I don't know what group he's a part of. Oath Keepers. I don't know. Is he militia? I, I believe that. that he's militia. Okay. Oath Keepers is a whole other thing. Right. Um, and and I mean, and what are you going to do? I mean, how how are you going to protect yourself from the bad guys? And there and there will be bad guys. I mean, it's I mean, it's you can't get rid of. Well, you the can bad. argue that it's the men in the recruiting center that are doing bad things. Right. But again, they are humans. They should be able to defend themselves. And come on, let's be honest. This is symbolism. That's all this is. It's not like they're actually protecting the recruiters in any way, shape, or form. Look, I went to this building today. I go to the bank right next door to it, and there's a back door on this building, right? Like, if you really wanted to storm the recruiting center. Right. And this is not about the actual yeah. preventing bad guys from coming in or shooting up. Right. It's about headlines. It's about, yeah, exactly. It's, it's about outreach. And there's a little bit of trolling going on. You think so? A little bit. What, but what, I mean, what level? How, what, what well, I mean, I mean, it's ruffling feathers. Mm, okay, yeah. It's, get, it's getting headlines, front page headlines. Yes, it is. Um, and it's actually uh, it's doing what we do best. It's bringing up what we do best, and that's debating the best way to do things. You know, yeah, and, absolutely. How, and, and and it's and it's bringing up the com it's it's creating a conversation. That's what's important. That's what activism. I think good activism does uh, is it starts a conversation, and that certainly. But it also uh, gets people angry, and it, you know, people critique, and that's why I said to Chris was like, you can tell you're on the right track because people are fuming mad about this. Somebody's upset. You must be doing something right. At least that's how I feel about it. And obviously there's people who will critique that viewpoint. Like, oh, if you're upsetting people, that doesn't necessarily mean you're doing something right. Well, it just depends, right? Because whenever you do activism, you put yourself out there, you put your opinions out there, you're going to upset somebody. You are questioning, in a lot, of a lot of terms, you're questioning other people's religion. Yeah, that's true. And you don't, it, I mean, what don't you talk about at the dinner table? You don't talk about politics and you don't talk about religion. And sometimes you don't talk about the uh, in laws. But I mean, those are the two big things you don't talk about. And why is that? Those why are is, the things you are should be talking yeah, why about. Are, yeah, exactly. Why are government and religion in the same group? Because guess what? Government is a religion. It's a religion. It's and a dangerous, it really, really affects people. And it's their, their beliefs. You know, this is how I do business. And you can't come at me and question how I do business. It's so religious. In fact, it has very many trappings of religion. In the government courts, you're in pews in most government courtrooms. I mean, come Take, on. And taking your hat off. Right. And and then also the flag. Standing at attention at the beginning of every every meeting. And it's you, an and, icon. And, and, and uh, giving your oath. It's an icon worship. You're, you know, you're, you're worshiping an inanimate object. 
as though it has and some you're probably, sort of meaning. And you're probably hanging that inanimate auction on the side of your house. And it's, mm-hmm. just, it's, it's really horrible that people don't get this. And they, and especially a lot of people. Well, who when actually, you're in the cult, it's hard to get. It's hard to get a cult like, member you to You better see keep that. that religion out of my out of my, out of my out of my politics. And it's like, what do you think you're yeah. doing? Well, I mean, we can see it, Conan. Uh, but other people would say that we're in a cult because you know we're in the freedom movement. We're in a bubble. I'll say that. What uh, do you mean? I, 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 we're in a bubble. We, uh, we have ideas and ideals, and we don't. Uh, get the opportunity to hear the other side of the subject. I don't know. You've uh, got the, the opportunity time. right now. 855 450 free if you want to give us the uh, the other side. You, Ian, being a part of Free Talk Live, and I know you you're in a bubble, but I mean you do get to hear, you know, the uh the uh, the other side of the subject a lot. Uh, it's open phones all the time here on Free Talk Live. So if you want to tell us why the, the government isn't a cult or a religion, I'd love to hear or you. Or tell us why we are a cult or yeah, why sure. we're in a bubble. Yep. Well, I'm always open to critique. Here, come on, come on in. 855-450 free. Hour three's next. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. Thanks to Bitcoin, LRN.FM is able to provide our free-to-air satellite channel across North and Central America. You can listen to LRN.FM 24-7 via satellite for no monthly cost. Learn more about our satellite channel at sat.lrn.fm. And if you'd like to help us continue to expand, you can send us Bitcoins via the address you'll find under the Bitcoin graphic in the right column of LRN.FM. To learn more about Bitcoin, visit weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, July 21st, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.82 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,106 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $280. Antiwar.com reports, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, at least 26 people were killed in a round of airstrikes against the Islamic State-held town of Manbej yesterday, and dozens of others were wounded. Many of the toll were civilians, including children. Though there is no official confirmation of who carried out the airstrikes, the observatory said that it was most likely the Syrian military. The U.S. and Allied warplanes have also attacked the town in recent days, however. Manbej is in the Aleppo province, part of the Islamic State territory near the Turkish border, which is not contiguous to the main territory. The Islamic State sought to link the two segments with offensives against the Kurdish city of Kobani, but has so far been unsuccessful. The U.S. has been keen to attack the region to help fund the Kurds with their offensives against the Islamic State, while the Syrian military is trying to slow the Islamic State expansion toward the Aleppo provincial capital, an important city half controlled by them and half controlled by other rebel forces. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. 
Slow moving and non thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. UPI reports officials in drought-stricken California have levied a $1.5 million fine against a group of farmers and residents with senior water rights for allegedly diverting water illegally, according to the State Water Board. The State Water Resources Control Board announced Monday the Byron Bethany Irrigation District, located in Tracy, California, just outside of San Francisco, must pay the fine or request a hearing with the Water Board within 20 days. The agency says the district continued to use water from an intake channel at the bank's pump plant for nearly two weeks after new water restrictions were put in place. Those new restrictions, ordered June 12th, curtailed water used by farmers with water rights dating back to 1903. Byron Bethany, along with a number of other irrigation districts, sued the Water Board challenging its authority to curtail their water rights, which date back to before 1914, the date the state originated its water rights system, according to the Sacramento Bee. The board said Byron Bethany diverted more than 2,000 acre feet of water during the two weeks it was allegedly out of compliance. The last time the state ordered restrictions for pre-1914 right holders was during a drought in the 1970s. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports the Cuban flag was raised over Havana's embassy in Washington on Monday for the first time in 54 years as the United States and Cuba formally restored relations, opening a new chapter of engagement between the former Cold War foes. Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez presided over the re-inauguration of the embassy, a milestone in the diplomatic thaw that began with an announcement by President Barack Obama and Cuban President Raul Castro on December 17th. Underscoring differences that remain between the United States and the communist-ruled Cuba, Rodriguez seized the opportunity to urge Obama to use executive powers to do more to dismantle the economic embargo, the main stumbling block to full normalization of ties. For its part, the Obama administration pressed Havana for improvement on human rights. But even with continuing friction, the reopening of embassies in each other's capitals provided the most concrete symbols yet of what has been achieved after more than two years of negotiations between two governments that had long shunned each other. Rodriguez said at the reopening ceremony, the historic events we are living today will only make sense with the removal of the economic, commercial, and financial blockade, which causes so much deprivation and damage to our people. The return of occupied territory in Guantanamo and respect for the sovereignty of Cuba. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. And in a surprise announcement this morning, U.S. Deputy Surgeon General Greg Paulson stated that, quote, it's fine to smoke cigarettes if you only smoke while drinking. The Deputy Surgeon General has called the press conference to discuss the shocking findings, which began just moments ago. Let's go live to that now. Was there a particular study this report was based on? Look, that, that determination was made after considering that someone who only smokes when at bars or parties ends up smoking maybe 15 cigarettes a month. What? While regular smokers are smoking 150 to 200 cigarettes each week. So we feel that it's just obvious that as long as you don't actually buy the cigarettes and you only smoke them while consuming the alcohol, then the risks of getting lung cancer are basically mostly negligible. Just common sense. Now this announcement comes on the heels of the Surgeon General's last announcement that drinking and driving is fine if you ate a lot that day or if it's a route you take all the time sober. Moving on, the Japanese Space Agency has announced plans to put a schoolgirl on the moon by 2015. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you can join us here. Toll free, our number is 855-450-FREE. We were talking about the, uh, the people 
standing guard outside of military recruiting centers. It's happening right here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, uh, with actually one of the co-hosts of Free Talk Live, one of our guest co-hosts. How yeah, do you like that? Chris. Uh, Chris Not Cantwell. Chris Not Cantwell. Is out there. Um, I haven't seen him out there, but I know he's doing it. He was interviewed in an article on the uh, the local newspaper. So, And I think it's great outreach. It's, a, it's an outreach project. They're not actually protecting the recruiters. It's a great conversation starter. Yeah. Exactly, and, it, and of course, it's going to piss someone off because there are people out there who do not agree with you. He said that they've had uh, the, uh, the Keene police, like half of the cops have come out and brought him water and are talking to him. And, you know, a lot of military people are coming out. You got parking enforcers who hate us to death, you know, given, sending out props. Were the parking enforcers doing I it? I saw a parking enforcer giving props. Well, that's the thing. And they don't know who all the free staters are. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that's one of the things we've been discussing tonight. Also, uh, different types of activism, critiquing that, and uh, you're welcome to share your thoughts on any of it. But, Conan, let's talk about bad customers. Customer service, it's always a challenge dealing with people who are behaving badly. People who got it in their head that the customer's always right, which, of course, anyone who's worked in retail knows that's not true. Well, uh, I've worked in, in the, sec- uh, the secret service. The I've worked in this uh, industry pretty much all of my career. Okay. And, yeah, you run into these people. And if you work for a big company, there are rules on how to handle these people. Sure. You, all right, hey, you, you got to give them a refund. You got to give them store credit. Or you got to give them a card or a little bonus or the next person's free. And if you can't handle it beyond that, you go get the store manager. Right. And the store manager has own, his own list of rules. And now I've been watching a lot of cooking shows mm-hmm. in the past six months. And there's a lot of uh, these uh, incidents where they'll set up like a restaurant or something. And they'll send in the secret diners and the secret, secret diners. Secret shoppers, yeah, sure. Yeah, they're 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 especially trying to push the limits, really? you know, sending food back and or putting a hair in the food and sending it back. Really? Or, I didn't or, realize secret shoppers took it to that level. Well, I just well, thought... Well, this is TV. This is reality TV. So, oh, of course, they're going to... see. But, I mean, there's no telling uh, in in the real world, you know, how far a secret shopper is allowed to take it. I mean, they there might be guys out there doing just that. Maybe. And you never find out about it. I mean, they send it back to corporate, and you find out that, oh, hey, yeah. Uh, well, you get yeah. the reports. Usually, they'll put the secret shopper report up for everyone to see. You they'll, just yeah. don't know who the secret shopper was. Yeah, exactly. Or, or exactly who was good to the secret shopper. And sometimes they get rewarded. They'll get a gift card for being an exceptional yeah. associate. But most of the time, all right, so anyways, these shows, th- these people take it to the limit. They are obnoxious. They uh, send things back or they complain about things that aren't real or maybe they are real. Maybe there really are problems and, and with the service and they're bringing up good points. This, secret shoppers could be a good thing. Oh, they're, they're definitely a good thing, although I'm questioning the tactics on this show. It definitely sounds like it's more for television than it is for giving good, honest feedback right. on service. But if you know that what you sent the customer is good to go. Yeah. And they start complaining about it or, or maybe they order a, 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 a $20 meal. And then, and then you're done cooking it, and you're about to bring it out in a couple mm-hmm. minutes, and they change their mind. Oh, yeah. How do you handle that individual? Do you say, oh, yeah, no problem. Let me go cook you up what you really want. <laughs> or are you like, hey, no, man. You're going to eat this, No, you could have told hole Yeah, you could have told me five minutes ago <laughs> that you didn't want this, and I would have stopped cooking immediately. So mm-hmm. how do you handle that? And the big debate is, hey, that's a potential customer. You want them coming back. Or what about the person who eats the entire meal and then says they didn't like it and exactly. they want to Exactly, yeah. How do you handle that? How do you handle that individual? Because you know what? You might give them a free meal, mm-hmm. and they might come back next week and pull the, pull the same, same exact crap. stunt. Or yeah. they might go down the street to your competitor's, your your neighbor restaurant, and do the same exact thing. All you're doing is you are reinforcing their bad behavior. You're enabling their bad mm-hmm. behavior. If you don't nip that in the bud, you're creating a problem. I agree. What's so, the story? Where You've got a story about uh, somebody behaving badly. So this is a prime example of some individuals who are behaving badly Portland, Maine, diner owner. And is this legit or is this some TV show? This is absolutely legit. This is not off of one okay. of my reality TV shows that I watch, the cooking shows. Portland diner owner under fire for yelling at toddler. And of course, there are many, many Facebook posts. There's a lot of people coming to and against this woman's defense. Mm-hmm. This is Portland, Maine. The owner of Portland diner is defending her actions and comments she made on social media that have left many outraged. Marcy's Diner on Oak Street in Portland downtown is a busy place on weekends. Owner Darla something or other said that partly what led her to snap at a child on Saturday. Uh, 
what's her name again? Marcy. Marcy said that the child's parents had ordered three pancakes and then didn't feed them to the girl, causing the child to cry loudly. Mm. And if you've ever worked in the service industry, uh, it's the worst. The toddlers and the babies and the oh, good. I've God, never worked are... in a restaurant, um, but you know everybody's been in a restaurant with a damn crying baby. It's awful. And the, and and the, what the worst part is is that usually, uh, the parents will try to coax the child, right? Uh, and subdue the child, and if that doesn't work, take it out. They take them out of the house, right? But but. It, every now and then, someone's just like, "Did just hang the child off their shoulder?" Just let them they, sit there. Or they just cry. let them sit in the in the yeah. basket, and it's like uh, now, now. Some would argue that's a way to handle crying children is you just let them cry it mm-hmm. out, but not in public, not, yeah. not in Walmart, not in this, not we'll in the restaurant. In I mean, come on now, you're not in, you're not in your house. You're not yeah. In a hot car. You look at the, <laughs> listen to this guy. You're never having kids, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I wasn't serious about that. So anyways, but yeah, taking them so out anyways, would be they good. Ordered, they ordered the kid three pancakes, and they didn't feed them to the girl, causing her to, car- to cry loudly. And this At- is a toddler, so we're talking two years old. Yeah, right? two years old. Okay. After attempts to get the family to leave or to take the girl outside, the donor, the diner owner said she slammed her hands down on the counter and told the girl to be quiet. She didn't even ask them to leave. She just she actually took it into yep. uh, she took it into her world. Which, by the way, if you're if you've ever had kids in today's time that's the like the one no-no you're not allowed to do that anymore i mean back in the day i mean you could actually discipline other parents kids Mm. like your neighbors like some kids are out in your street i mean they're they're uh uh i don't know they're walking on your grass or something you can yell at them them, them, but you can't yell at other kids anymore i mean that's the the strangest thing well, that's exactly what she did and that's where she crossed the boundary now maybe she she, though maybe she had actually gone up and and you say hey look and we, I've got to ask you to do something about that kid, man. Yeah. I mean, I've, you're not the only customers in this building. I mean, I've got 70 other customers in here, and you, your kid is— They're pissed. I mean, maybe there's a few of those 70 people that are, oh, yeah, I can relate. My kid was bad, yeah, no. too. But most of them are going to be annoyed by that. You I, don't come to a restaurant for crying children. You go to McDonald's or something, you expect to have some crying children in the playground or whatever. Yeah, but, you go uh, to restaurants to get away from it all. You right. go to you go to get served. It's you know, quiet. Get, get, it's getting taken nice. care of. I want to read my newspaper, drink my coffee, right. and I didn't come here to listen to some brat. I mean, even wailing. a diner. You you know, okay, if it's a diner, then you know you got the you got the lady with the cigarette hanging out of her mouth coming over to the table. All right, what do you want? <laughs> you know, that's the kind of diner attitude that you would expect from the staff. Yeah, they're not but allowed. Still they're not allowed to do the, the whole cigarette thing anymore. That's but. true. <laughs> but you know what I mean. There's that. What do you want? That kind of diner attitude, which is fun to go to those things, but you don't go there to hear babies crying. Nobody does that. Yeah, that was so. That was the diner owner's take. Here's the mother's take. The child's mother posted on Marcy's diner's wait, Facebook. Wait, 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 wait. Did it work? I, well, that's what I want to know. When she well, came uh, down, she slams her hands on the table. She says, you shut up, you, you know little what? brat. You know what? And there's, by the way, there is video. Go to this site. It's it's okay. a local station. I, I take I've, you got it. You're gonna, I've got it pulled up here. Gonna, now, wait. You, is there actual video of what happened in the right. diner? So now there is the video. No, no, there isn't. But there's okay. video of the, the cut, the news cut. And, of course, they put this stuff together. I asked someone else about it. Like, yeah, they really put this diner, this diner owner, in a bad light. They made her look like an idiot. And oh. we, we just talked about this last week with the whole uh, Colbert Report crap. and These yeah. reality tele- uh, uh, shows and the news, they're looking for the viewers, and they know how to spin anything to make it look you know, to make it go their way. You want me to play this, Conan? Should I, I mean, have you watched the full thing? Well, there are three full videos. Package? There's the actual news footage, is like three minutes. Yeah, I and, got one here that's four minutes thirty seconds. And then there's the then there's just the the diner's interview, mm-hmm. and then there's just the mother's interview. And it's very interesting to put all three of these on the same site. So now oh, you can yeah, actually I see that. So if you so if you're interested in actually seeing uh, the raw versus the mm-hmm. the output, this is a prime story that's already you know it's all right there available on the same page so which one i mean if do you should we play one of these and yeah, if so which one of them yeah let's play the first video let's the play the full main package video. the full main package. news package all right so we'll come back with that here in a moment and then you can you know you can jump in here anytime you want and join the conversation if Have you've you worked, worked in this if you've worked in the service industry this has happened to you i want oh, to yeah. hear it if you've worked in the business, you currently work in the business, or maybe you're on the other side. Maybe you're the parents. Maybe you're the parents of a bratty child who was acting out and you were treated poorly and you feel like you were treated unfairly. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. More Free Talk Live coming up. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. 
you certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Did you know that drinking pure, high alkaline water is one of the most important factors in maintaining high energy and vibrant health? Most experts agree that the water you drink should be at a pH level of 8 or higher. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops, available only at AlkaVision.com, combine a unique formula of only the most alkaline minerals. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops alkalize your water, ridding the body of harmful toxins, and helps you regain health and energy. Alkalizing your water by simply adding 10 drops of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps the body rid itself of acidic waste, increases oxygen content, and raises the pH of your body to healthy levels. And bacteria and viruses cannot survive in an alkaline high pH environment. Order your bottle of AlkaVision Plasma pH drops for only $29.95 at AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Or call 269-409-1776. 269-409-1776. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health at AlkaVision.com today. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Have you ever worked in the service business? Maybe you currently do work in the service business. And I don't just mean in restaurants. Also, uh, the uh, the retail business, you'll encounter this kind of stuff, too. If you bake cakes for someone, if you do yard sales, if, you, if you're a clerk at a bank. You're going mean- to encounter bad customers. You're going to encounter customers who are irrational, who are angry, who are uh, really tough to deal with, and who believe they're right. And so it's hard to handle that. And We're- somewhere along the line, they said the customer is, is always, always right. right. I don't know who phrase Ooh, that yeah. but sorry not true anyone who's ever worked with the public knows that is not true in fact sometimes the customer's trying to scam you correct sometimes the customer is a criminal correct and if you don't nip this kind of behavior in the bud 
you know, all you do is enable these people to go to the next establishment yeah. and, and pull the exact same stunt. I mean, so what do you do to fix this crap? So, you know, how do you handle this? We've actually got a story about a diner owner who's under fire for uh, yelling at a toddler in her restaurant. The parents were not controlling their child, just letting it cry, apparently, over not being fed pancakes. And so the diner owner went in, took matters into her own hands. we got the video here that you recommended, Conan. We'll play that here in just a moment. Also want to recommend to you that you check out purse.freetalklive.com. You can get 20 25%, maybe even more off of whatever you buy on Amazon by paying with Bitcoin. As Mark has pointed out, this is like getting a raise because if, you know, you buy things in life and you can save 20% on everything you buy, that's a tremendous uh, increase in your comfort level, right? Like in the in your buying power, you can get the things you want at 20% off, 25%. The, the headphones I'm wearing, I got a 29% off the price on Amazon. They're already a good price on Amazon. Knock another 29% off. That's what happened. Uh, that's the last item I bought on Purse. I bought like two dozen things using Purse so far, and it's awesome. Go try it for yourself. Get signed up through our URL. That way, Free Talk Live gets credit. Uh, we'll get a very small portion of each purchase that you make. If you know, if you don't, then it all goes to Purse. So go to purse.freetalklive.com. That's purse.freetalklive.com. When you get started, they max you out at 15%, but I believe it's when you complete your first transaction and you get positive rating from the person you were transacting with uh, that you then open up and you can then select whatever amount discount that you want. Now, the, the larger the discount, the longer it might take to get your order fulfilled. Uh, but there's a purse instant where you can save 5% instantly. And then, uh, you know, like the 29% I got off these headphones, I got that within a day. So usually you don't have to wait very long at all. Have you tried this yet, Conan? I have not. I have, I don't sell through it or buy through it. I but, highly uh, recommend it. Have you ever bought on Amazon? Well, that's the thing. I haven't even bought an Amazon package in really? maybe six months. No, no, I, I buy Amazon. Without I, Amazon. I'm, I'm a scrounger. <laughs> I, now, hold on now. I sell on Amazon. You do? Okay. Oh, yeah. I sell lots, of, especially books. I'm selling them. I'm selling a good couple of months. Well, right? as a seller, if somebody uses Purse to buy your stuff, that's you thing. still get the full amount. Yeah, exactly. And I haven't really looked in. I don't think, I don't know if I have to click a button uh, to say I want to be a part of the purse. Uh, no, are, yeah, you're just you would you wouldn't even know when somebody buys stuff from uh, the, whoever it is that you're selling. If you're a seller on Amazon, you don't know who the purse customers are right. because somebody's just buying the thing as a gift for someone. That's all. I mean, I know who the customer is. Yeah, but I don't know. So, you, but you're saying I won't ever be. Uh, You'll never be aware. Enlightened with yeah. the information that hey, by the way, you just sold your. Book to a purse customer. For Bitcoin, right. Yeah. Um, so Amazon doesn't get the Bitcoin, and it's basically a marketplace. Your buy order goes on a marketplace, and then somebody's willing to pay 20% above the cost of Bitcoin to get Bitcoin. That's how this works, and it's brilliant. There's a little video on the front page of their website. explains it all. Purse.freetalklive.com. Yeah, go. I promise the next Peace Flag I purchase. You'll do it through Purse. It'll be through Purse. Guess how many Peace Flags I go through, Ian? Not very many. <laughs> I bought one three years ago, <laughs> and I still have it. That's good to know, because no one knows where you live. Yeah, Conan. exactly. Uh, let's go to Aaron. He's in Indianapolis. We're talking about bad customers, uh, and also maybe you're a, g a good customer, but you've had bad customer service. That happens, too. Uh, Aaron, go ahead. Share your story. Oh, well, I was going to say, um, I actually work in a public library, and uh, screaming children are probably a daily occurrence for us yeah, there. Yeah, that's definitely a no-no if you're in a library. And do me a favor, Aaron, back off your phone by about an oh. inch. It'll sound a little bit better. You're distorting on okay. it. Oh, and, and, and probably old bums coming in and sleeping on the couch, too? Oh, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, we get a lot of weird things. Uh, yeah, you sound, up. you sound better now. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. But what I guess I was going to say, I kind of, so we deal with these kind of things sometimes, and usually it has to be ratcheted up pretty high before we do something. But I've found that I usually have a lot of success if I just go up and kind of embarrass the parent a little bit. Really? Uh, well, I mean, not call them out in front of everybody, but I think a lot of people do tend to uh, succumb to the social pressure that a crying child uh, causes. I mean, you know, the kid's crying, and everybody's going to kind of be looking at you and stuff. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and most people are going to pick the kid up and walk out of the room or whatever yeah, and, and deal yeah. with it. But what do you say to a parent? Like, um, excuse me, can you deal with that? No, no, I mean, no, 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 you, no, no. Yeah, you don't well, say it like say. that, Ian. That's, you, just, you just lost <laughs> yeah. right there. Well, yeah, I mean, you just say, hey, you know, obviously your child's having some issues or they're upset. Maybe if you take them outside or to the restroom for a moment or something, get them calmed down. Mm -hmm. And I've found probably a half dozen or a dozen times that's always just embarrassed the person enough that they leave. 
And I think this, I guess what kind of struck me about this lady, I've got a couple of little kids too, and I'm not defending having a uh, screaming child. And I've done that walk of shame out of Walmart <laughs> or a restaurant with everybody staring yep. at you and a two-year-old toddler who's just having a meltdown. But I don't think the lady was really appropriate in yelling at the child because, you know, the kid just doesn't have the mental capacity to realize what they're doing. I mean, the control centers of their brain aren't wired yet for mm -hmm. inhibition control and stuff like that. And it just, the woman obviously let her frustration get to her. Well, right, she, she must have been pushed to the brink, right? I mean, these parents yeah, just let that and, child cry and cry and cry, supposedly. I haven't seen the, you know, yeah, we didn't see yeah, video and, of it. And you, you know, and if she had nipped it in the bud earlier or if she realized that she was very frustrated, maybe she could have sent a server over or if there was a cook or something. But uh, Yeah, I see what you're saying. If you're too hot under the collar, let somebody yeah. else take care of it. Exactly. You know, and, but, you know, uh, I th and I think you brought up a really good point is that's letting these parents, letting these troubled customers, uh, problem customers, actually know that there is a situation. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, some people... You know, they could be oblivious to it. They could. They have arguments like this all the time. I mean, they're at yeah. their house and they're yelling at their kids and they're yelling at their husbands and wives. But and they go out in public and they do the same thing. Because and they don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, that's just that's just commonplace for them. Yeah. So I mean, if you actually I, let them know and actually have to go and approach them, and now and now everyone's looking at them. Oh, you you just yeah you I think you you hit on it right there. Uh, very yeah. very politely embarrass them is the way to probably uh, handle this. And you say face, too. Yeah, public shaming. Maybe we'll put it like that. And I guess I was going to say one other thing to you guys were saying the customer may not is not always right or the customer is always right. There was a variation of that that I've heard, that the customer may not always be right, but the customer is always the customer. And true, true. I, I don't, yeah, I guess if you're ultimately getting their money, that's the... Uh, and you never know, it might goal. be a secret shopper, it might be a food editor who's in town to judge your uh, your restaurant... And, you know, you just got to treat everyone like they're a food editor. Otherwise, yeah. you might get uh, the Facebook post that ruins you. That, I mean, actually yeah, ruins man. you. Or, you know what? But in I my, don't and, think and, a Facebook well, post is going to ruin. I mean, look, this lady's under fire, but she's getting more publicity now than she's probably ever gotten. I mean, how many people have heard of the Portland Diner if they're not in Portland? And how many customers <laughs> like myself who want to go to an establishment that's nice and quiet is going to go and give my money to this lady? Exactly. I say, you know what? Hey, I appreciate what you did. I appreciate you putting these people in their place. I'm going to come give you my money because I like to. Yeah, I like to come sit in a nice, quiet place and drink coffee and, and read the newspaper without listening to some brat squalling. <laughs> Aaron, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate it. The toll-free number, if you want to join us, maybe you've worked in retail, the food service industry, 855-450-FREE. That's our number. Join us here on Free Talk Lot. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of level 3 and level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. After years of weekly meetings with his psychologist, local man Chris Vaughn told reporters today he was excited to only have two sessions left before completely resolving all of his emotional issues and never having the need to return to another therapy session again. When I started therapy, I knew if I could make it through exactly 120 50-minute sessions with Dr. Warner, then all of my issues with depression and crippling anxiety would be gone. Next week, we're covering my parents. The week after that, we're wrapping up my trust issues and then I should be good to go. According to Vaughn, it took 40 sessions alone to fully resolve his feelings of inadequacy and low self-esteem resulting from an unhappy childhood. Vaughn's therapist, Dr. Susan Warner, told Onion reporters that she's pleased with her patient's progress and relieved that his longtime emotional and cognitive issues are nearly solved for good. I told him that getting healthy would take at least 100 hours of therapy, and now he'll never have to see me again. Thank God for that. That guy was a real piece of work. 
This is the Onion News Network. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE or via Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. Send a contact request to us at that username. You'll be approved, and it'll be easy for you to call us from that point forward. The us includes me, Ian. And Conan. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. We've got a lot of features there, including archives that go back for years. You can download as many episodes of Free Talk Live as you could possibly listen to and more all over for free at freetalklive.com. So please enjoy. Again, that's freetalklive.com. As we go right back into your calls and thoughts, we'll get to more of the story here that you brought in tonight, Conan, about a Portland diner owner who is in hot water right now. She snapped. For yelling at a toddler in her restaurant. We'll tell you more about that. We'll play the news package from WCSH out in Portland. And this is Portland, Oregon, I believe. Yeah, uh, Maine. No, it's, it is Maine. You're right about that because it's neighbors. W instead of K. Uh, so let me go to Nathan first. He's in Texas via Skype. Hello, Nathan. Hello, guys. Hey there. Go ahead. Uh, nice story there, by the way. Some uh, nonviolent shaming being used there to uh, to do something good. Um, so I wanted to ask Conan a question about uh, long hair on men. Um, specifically, what do you think of about it? How does it look? And did you have any problems when you were trying to initially grow it out? Because I grew mine out a little bit, and when I went to the barber, he kind of busted it all down to the Ian haircut kind of thing. And before you know, before I could say anything. Uh, he'd already, you know, cut some of it off. I was like, oh, well, it was just, it's just like a month's growth. But I mean, what do you think, Conan? I, uh, I'm a scrounger. I don't like giving middlemen my money. So there's a whole paying a barber money Mm -hmm. to cut my hair uh, thing. So, I mean, I, I used to cut my own hair. I always go back and forth. I go long hair, short hair, long hair, short hair. And when I do go short hair. How long have you had the long hair? For a good long time. This stuff. As long as I've known you. Yeah, it's uh, since 2012, 11 is when I. You were in the military. When did you get out of the military? Oh, that was in 01. Okay. So I, I immediately started growing it out as soon as I got out. But uh-huh. I mean, there was a there was a period of time there when I just I was always crew cutting, and a crew cut is where you just take the uh, the buzzers. Yep. And you just you just you know, buzz your head. That's zip, what zip, I do. Zip. And of course, I have a cone head. <laughs> oh. So I actually had to I had to keep in mind that I have a point on top of my head. So uh-huh. I just keep in mind when I do the the, the the cutting, I just kind of go around it and I just blends it in. So I, I do a little bit of fade. 
but when was the last time you did that? 2010, 2011, 2011, 20, yeah, a long okay. time ago. I mean, it's I've been growing this hair out for a long time. Yeah. It's almost to the. When's the last time you cut it, trimmed it? I don't, I don't trim it. You either. haven't trimmed it, okay? Yeah, I mean that's that's. Oh, who, the girls will freak out over that. They they say you'll get split ends <laughs> or whatever. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, here's and here's the thing about the you girls. You gotta trim it. And of course, I have long hair for the ladies. <laughs> that doesn't work though, does oh, well, it? Well, here's the thing. So every time oh, I've tell, ever cut my tell. long hair, I will piss a good fifty percent of the ladies off. It's like, 50%. oh my God, you cut your hair. And of course, I Are make they the older I, ladies or younger ladies. It varies. It varies from the young all the way up to 80 year old ladies to, to the youngins. And it's all, you just, you can't, well, here's what I've found out you can't make these ladies happy. You're going to piss. No, that's true. Just you like can't. activism. Yeah. You do a thing that some people are used to or that some people like, and you're going to piss the other half off. So, I, I mean, had long hair once, Conan, actually. I had hair that was definitely shoulder length, a little bit longer than shoulder length, not mm-hmm. quite as long as yours. Yours are like nipple length. Uh, oh, it's way this. back there. It goes, it's, yeah. It's, well, I see it on the front right now, and it's it's like nipple length on the on the front. Okay. And uh, and I always got compliments from old women. <laughs> so not once did I ever get a compliment from a younger lady. And further, after I cut my hair and actually had some relationships with some uh, younger ladies, they uh, none of them, told, you know, not not a one of them were into uh, long long hair. Well, guys. now you got the hipster girls running around, and they got uh-huh. the they. Not only are they into longer hair, some really? of them, but they're also into beards. Okay. Which I think is that horrible. That seems weird. Yeah, because women normally don't just, like and the not beard. Just, not, just, not just Don Johnson's scrub. I mean uh-huh. straight out, you know, beards, like, uh, you know, Lysander Spooner Most beards. Most women I've known have not liked the beards either because, yeah, I think, you I think know, they're disgusting. When, when you're kind of doing sexy things, it could be uncomfortable. It's, it's, not, it's not ticklish. It's straight yeah. up like sandpaper. It's right. it's, it's uncomfortable. Um, so here's the thing, though. So I will tell you. That I wash my hair every single day with okay. shampoo. Really? And I guess that could... Do you use conditioner? I, I usually get one of those mixes. Right the now, two I, in one. Right now I, I pick a lot of crap up, so I'm actually going through dumpster shampoo. And some of them are pretty <laughs> horrible, so I mean, I... <laughs> and I, and I, you know, I, I got to use it up somehow or another. I don't, I don't, you know, I could use it on the dog, but... Uh, I Man, mean, I saw a guy pull... Uh, he was a, I was at Walmart today walking in. And there was a dude going through the trash can out front. He pulled out a uh, <laughs> he pulled out a bottle of Sprite that had maybe twenty percent left in it. Wow! I'm like, man, was you're he, scraping. Was he, was he going yeah. through the uh, ashtrays as well to get the, the cigarette? I butts? didn't stick around to watch, but I'm um, like, damn, you're scraping, dude. Just go drink some water, dude. You don't need to pull out a twenty percent remaining Sprite bottle. That's nasty. Well, I will say that I found some really nice like sample. They're like, I don't even know what the stuff is anymore. I'm going through them. I got like a hundred of them. Mm-hmm. And I really, really like it. So I, I wash my hair every day, uh, which might peeve some people off. You know, they they don't they want to wash their hair every like three days, or when they do take a shower, they just kind of rub some soap through, and that's done. I mean, I actually mm-hmm. have to to go to town because I'm a greasy dude. Okay. I mean, I really got to go to town on this. Otherwise, I will be like dreadlocks. I will be like wow. I will be like the straight Conan the Barbarian running around, and and I gotta you know I. I'm in the service industry. I've got to sell things to people. I can't mm-hmm. be looking like I'm a, you know, straight off the off the island selling well, you that, some, some that ganja. Brings up, that brings up the next point, Conan, which is how do potential employers look at people with long hair versus short hair, do you think? Do some, like, some care and some don't? Or I have never had a problem, but I've always worked kind of on the outskirts. I worked for the post office, but mm-hmm. I was a rural carrier, so I didn't have to wear a uniform. I mm-hmm. drove my own truck. You did overnights at Walmart. I did overnights at Walmart. Yeah, I mean, so every, everywhere I've pretty there. much worked, I've worked in the industry that was off to the, uh, the, you know, off to the side, which mm-hmm. didn't really matter if I... My shirt wasn't You're just slinging or... boxes. There's no customers around. You're, you're, you were working the 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 Walmart that has a closing time. Mm-hmm. It's not one of the ones. That's and if I ever did have to work the store, and there were times when I did, I would tuck my shirt, and I yeah. would, you know, maybe I would have to wear a ponytail or something. But, um, you know, that's just that's just what you got to deal with. I, but in general, no, I have not had to deal with, and especially here in New Hampshire, you know, every three people in New Hampshire has a tattoo. Okay. Uh, every every at least one in ten dudes in New Hampshire has long hair. I a lot mean, of them have mean, big old beards too, or big, big old, old mountain man beards, or big old hoops in their ears, or mm-hmm. you know this is there's a lot of uh, you might consider outrageous individuals here in the area, and it's just it's not people don't even look at that. I mean it's just norm. Yeah, it's um, just part of the culture there in New Hampshire. You're saying? Yeah, it is, and I've been to places where it is not. I was in Tennessee for a little while, and I had a hard time walking around without my shirt on. 
I mean, wow. people people really they well, would, they, would they, they say things to you? Yeah, they would stop. Well, not well. They would they would stare and they would give me the evil eye or this <laughs> or the or the upturned <laughs> nose or they would say, hey, well, I can't sell you gas in this gas station until you go put a shirt on. That's crazy. And it's like, dude, I want to give you money and look, you're in a hole in a wall. It's a it's a friggin' wooden <laughs> floor. This is an old hundred year old building, a wooden floor. I can't. Oh, come on now. So I mean, there are people out there who just they live in different a different yeah, that's world. That's true. And in New Hampshire, it's not like that. Well, I mean, why why are you asking, Nathan? You're just curious, or are you toying with the idea of going long hair? Well, I was toying with it until I got the buzz cut today. But yeah. you know, oh, that was today. <laughs> I didn't realize that was today. Yeah. So let that be a warning to potential uh, individuals who do want to get long hair. Try to avoid the barber if you can in that initial phase. Well, the, the, you know, the one of the worst part the worst part about long hair is the growing out of the long hair, right? Because you get that awkward phase where it's like getting in your eyes, and then it's getting down, and you, you know, you can't do anything. You can't. You can't, you can't tie you, it back. You can't put it behind your ears. Right. You can't do anything. Yeah. So there are right. like uh, modes. It's a few months that you got. To get through there. Well, I would say Several. it's a lot longer than a yeah. few months. I mean, this right here is probably about three or four years of hair yeah. right here. Okay. Um, it so doesn't grow uh, that fast. So, just uh, on one last note, if you hypothetically did go to a barber, what would you tell them to avoid, you know, them giving you any kind of significant buzz cutting or anything like well, that? Well, like I said, the last barber I was ever at was in the military when I. Uh, before I figured uh, out how to fade my own hair, I don't think I would want to go to a barber if I wanted. If I had long hair, and back then it was like it was it was only like seven dollars a cut. Yeah. Now it's I and mean, what is it? What is it now? Hell, if I know, I haven't been to. A, I, I know. Been to a I, 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 place and, and, there are, and by the way, there are enough. It's uh, probably like twenty bucks. I don't know. Let's there are enough barbers here in the area. I paid over ten bucks, so I will leave it. Yeah, at that. forget that. Well, then I, you got a tip too. Forget that. Yeah, and the t- yeah, forget that middleman. I'm cut him out of my out of my uh, system. Thanks for the call, Nathan. Appreciate it. Good luck with the hair. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. You know, I wish the Facebook pages would let you do the poll questions. They don't do that anymore. Uh, on page, uh, they don't at all. Not on I, the pages. No, you can do it in a group, but yes. not on a page. Because I'd love to ask a poll question. You know, ladies, what do you think about long hair? More on the way. It's free talk live. Today, Geico's edition of Stuff Found in Your Car takes us under your driver's seat. Hi, I'm Penny. I used to think I was lucky, but then you dropped me down here. I get it. I'm only worth a cent. Not like the hundreds of dollars you could save when you switch your car insurance to Geico. That's money you could put in a bank or a wallet. Go ahead. Call Geico. I'll be here on the floor. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com today. Growth can be an intimidating six-letter word, especially when the guys upstairs want 7% of it. That's why you need one eight-letter word, G-R-A-I-N-G-E-R. Granger. the G is for growth. From industry specialists to over a million products across almost every category, Granger has the resources to help us grow. Now, can you guess what my favorite four-letter word is? W-O-R-K. Let's get back to it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock and my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC. Dot, dot, dot com. You are an individual with your own thoughts, decisions, and actions. So why should you be penalized for not enrolling in the subpar health insurance mandated by the government when you can be truly independent with Liberty HealthShare, a bold, innovative alternative allowing you to take back control and make your own decisions about your health care. Mention this ad when you call to learn more. 800-714-6993. That's 800-714-6993. Liberty HealthShare. Together, we are one. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and weed, the road to freedom. 
a film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You've got time to join us here. Whether you want to talk about dealing with awful customers crying children and the parents who won't do anything about it. And long Samson hair. Yep, we're talking about long hair as well. You can uh, join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Also, Skype in at username lrn.fm. Want to remind you, Keenvention is coming up. It's the third annual Keenvention. And I am a fan of this event. I, uh, I'm the person who throws the event, but I, maybe that won't be the case. Maybe I'll give it up uh, next year and somebody else can organize it um, because, you know, it's a lot of fun to do Keenvention, but there's some work involved. And uh, it's it's an intimate convention that happens here in Keene, New Hampshire. It happens in the fall. It's actually Halloween weekend, as a matter of fact. This weekend, Halloween falls on a Saturday, so that'll be right smack dab in the middle of Keenevention. Uh, it's an intimate conven- convention, and what I mean by that is very small attendance. That doesn't mean it's a failure, um, although it did lose money last year. It actually made money the first year, so you never know how that's going to pan out. But, you know, with the first the first few years of uh, running conventions, you really can't expect it to be a profitable enterprise. And even if it did make a profit, I would just roll those back into the next year to make the next year's one better. Uh, because to me, Keenvention is all about focusing on activism. It's about promoting the activist personalities that we have here in New Hampshire. We've talked a lot about some of the activist uh, activism that happens here in New Hampshire. And uh, J.P. Freeman, for instance, is likely going to be at Keenvention, the guy we talked about in the very beginning of the show. So the doers, the movers and the shakers in the New Hampshire Liberty Movement, I invite a lot of them to come speak at Keenvention. This is your chance to meet them in person. It's your chance to, uh, to sort of powwow with them and talk about activism and ask questions and learn from the people who have the experience doing things. Not just people that are on the streets like JP, but there's going to be the legislative panel, which will have uh, free free state project participants and other liberty-minded legislator types and people with experience in the state house. So you can learn about everything from inside the system, political action, all the way to doing cop block and hitting the streets. And you can actually go out and do some activism. You can go out with Robin Hood of Keene and actually go downtown and fill some expired parking meters. So, you know, not only is there fun stuff in the hotel and in life, Lightning uh, panel discussions and speeches, but there's also the fun activism and social events that happen as well. Conan, you threw a killer bonfire last year. Hopefully that'll happen again. We got Hallow Keen, which is a costume dance party. That's coming back uh, this year. It's going to be even better. We'll get to go later. It's a better venue. Go to keenvention.info. Tickets are 60 bucks. That gets you in for the entire weekend. Includes admittance to the Halloween dance party. I don't. Uh, Halloween's going to meet bring the cost of the event up. I don't even know if I can make money at 60 bucks on this. It, it might be a, a loser, but to me, it's worth it because it's fun. Because people come and they have a good time and they get to experience uh, what it's like to be around other people who care about freedom. That's what it. That's what it means to me. It gives people an excuse to come here and check out New Hampshire, check out the this area that we live in, Conan, and uh, do it during the fall, which is right. a great time of year still, to be here. Still beautiful. Still hasn't gotten so cold that you uh, have to go hibernate for. 
for a couple of months. Right. And, and you will have to hibernate for a month or two. I mean, but it's not that bad. I mean, hey, it's 2015. A lot of people complain about the cold. That's a come on, man. I had a guy it, complaining 2015, about the heat. Today. Their heat heat is affordable. Yeah. So join us for Keenvention. It's a lot of fun, and there's usually like no more than a hundred people there. And at any time, that's over the whole weekend. So at any time, there's no more usually than forty to sixty people in the actual uh, Keenvention hall, if you will. And so you get to meet everybody. If anybody you want to meet that's going to be speaking at Keenvention, it's easy. It's not like you know they're swamped with. I want to. I want to push a seventy plus bonfire this year. How many people were there last year? Like 50? I think, I think it was like 60 at one time and at, awesome. the, at the highlight. I want to go past 70 because, I mean, that uh, that's just neat. I well, mean, being out there in a big old yard with a with a screaming fire, I mean, that was that was really special. It was a lot of fun. And a lot, people made connections there that they hadn't made even at Keenvention as well. And so. then the people who missed it, guess what? They were bummed. <laughs> oh, yeah. So come on up here. Uh, join the fun. Keenvention.info. That's where you can go to get tickets, learn about the hotel, get a hotel discount and all that. So come on up. Join us October 30th through November 1st as we go to John in northern Minnesota listening to WNMT. Hello, John. Hello. Hey. Yeah, I got a, a couple stories about long hair. Yes, sir. Uh, one was when I was in the Navy for the late 50s, early 60s. And I, I used to uh, keep it all tucked up underneath my uh, my sailor hat. And uh, then uh, for inspections, uh, I'd, I'd really have my, you know, everything all straight, straight. But nobody ever asked me to take my hat off because I was a pretty good sailor, you know. And, uh, but... Uh, but anyway, uh, then the other day, I went to visit my mom. She's over 100 in a rest home, and she didn't recognize me. You had so, you had long hair or short hair at the time? I had I, I had long hair. I, I okay. had long hair for about 10 years, and uh, it, it gets thinner when you get older. I'm past. I'm closer to 80 than I'm 70. But uh, but anyway, uh, I, I said, "Well, mom, I got my hair combed. <laughs> you know, I combed it back, so it was." keep on my face and everything but uh people are they're not as uh, picky about it like they used to be in northern minnesota you know hmm. so you're you feel long hair more accepted now than previously oh yeah yeah it is and, and then i have a long beard too and and uh because i just quit shaving you know and people say well, when are you going to shave and i said well i shave my legs and they say well <laughs> do you really no, let me, no, let me ask you something. Do you do you feel that maybe the the hippie uh, generation kind of held long hair back? Do you think that there was a stigma involved with their movement, and then there was a couple well, of years, I, a couple of decades there where people were like, yeah, we we don't want to have any part of that. But I mean, of course, it was the, the '80s metal, and they mm -hmm. had long hair, and yeah. of course there was some. But most of it was like, well, now the hippies are the retirees. They're the ones who are retiring right now. So exactly. Maybe that's why it's yeah. more acceptable. Well, in in the '60s and '70s. Uh, I didn't. I didn't wear long hair. I was. I was in sales, and I was selling mm -hmm. where I had to wear a three-piece suit and drive a fancy Lincoln or Cadillac or Imperial or something like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, so, I could do that. I could so, do that right now if I had a suit on. That would be the. That would be the winning combination right there. But I can have tattoos all up my arms. I can have tattoos on my neck. I can have my ears stretched, yeah. and I can have long hair, and I'll probably just do do just fine in sales. Yeah. Oh, you'd be hard. You'd be hard pressed to get a job in sales I don't know. like that. Well, maybe it, it, was... it depends who your it depends who your clients are. Right. Who, who what type of people you're selling to? Because it's just a costume. Every every everything's a costume. You know, That's whatever true. you're wearing. And what you're selling is is if if you believe in it and you can convince them that it's going to help them, then they'll get it. You you're know, selling yourself. You I mean, in in sales, yeah. you you are to some extent selling selling yourself to the the prospect. And yeah. if you are, let's say you're working for a rock radio station, then you might be able to get away with having some tattoos or some gauged earrings yeah. because then you're going to be calling on tattoo parlors and strip clubs, you know, to try to sell the, the advertising. Um, so, yeah, yeah just I, you have to dress I, I, to, I, for the customer. I never did like those uh, porno stores and, and the strip joints and stuff like that. I like the country type uh, music type people or bluegrass or gotcha. banjo or stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I think they've done studies recently, and of course, they're, yeah, of course, they're always doing these types of studies. But I think they've come to the conclusion that yeah, these types of things, long hair, tattoos, earrings, they do not affect the clientele like it has been previously thought of. I mean, people are more interested yeah. in the conversation and how they're approached, whether they're approached warmly, and whether the the uh, the associate actually knows what he's talking about and and 
you know, points them out in the right direction and sells them the right item. I I'm mean, glad that, to hear at, that. At the end of the day, that's what really matters. I do. I worked with a guy a couple of years ago. And this is during day, not at night shift. He had a he had a he had a friggin' Michael uh, Mike Tyson tattoo. It was you know, his whole, <laughs> oh whole half God. of his face was tatted up. I mean, he was a good salesman, and they didn't give him any hard. Incredible, time. John. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. It's nice to hear that uh, you know that people are moving in a more accepting direction. But he had a bad credit things. rating too. Because there are still places, I mean, there are still places that will not let you work at, you know, with customers if you've got tattoos showing. There, they, Those places still exist. Yeah, they do. But, but I'm glad to hear that people are becoming more accepting towards them. You know, Conan, we're not going to have time to play this uh, video, but the Portland Diner owner, uh, it's not the actual footage from inside the diner. The woman who, who apparently screamed at a toddler, there's been a lot of feedback on her Facebook profile. But one of the things we touched on, and I'll put the link up on our Facebook and our, our uh Yeah, go our to the page and look because you, you can see the news cut and yep. then you can see her interview and then you can see the parents' interview. And it's very curious, the, 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 the cuts that they use in That's their footage. So you get to see all of it. So it I've is, never it, seen that with a news company before where they actually show you longer versions right. of what they put together. Well, this is this is New Hampshire. Oh, not New Hampshire, but this is New England. So I mean they're yeah. maybe they're they're you know fighting a different game ball game over there. So one of the things you did touch on briefly though was the idea of a boycott instead of a boycott mm -hmm. where this may not be a bad thing for the Portland diner. There may be customers, yes, there may be some parents who say, well, I'm not going there ever again and because of the way that she treated this kid. But there are also, as you pointed out, maybe some people who really appreciate having a uh, crying brat-free restaurant uh, to eat at who are going to make a point That's right. of going to this place. You know, the Chick-fil-A controversy from a few years ago is a perfect example of it where Chick-fil-A got in some hot water because they're kind of like a Christian company and not so friendly to, uh, to gay people publicly, at least at the company level did it, did it hurt them it didn't hurt them at all they had line they had like a line around the the restaurants yep. uh, of, of these people that were going there specifically to give them business so publicity can be a real good thing even if it seems bad we'll see you tomorrow night hi i'm montel williams most of you know me as a talk show host but i'm also an author actor single father of four a fitness writer avid snowboarder and i'm also a medical marijuana patient like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm gonna tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com.